And just like that, the big red button's been pushed. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Natives in America podcast, and you're listening to your host, Benjamin Juan. That's me. Ooh, yeah. And my co-host, who's with me from the beginning, Sky Anto. Your bro host. Bro host. Oh, man, we're back at it. We it's been a while. <laughs> we put it on the back burner, yeah. and life came up, and we had to handle some stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah, we, we're... Busy, busy. We're in, we're back in the dungeon, you know, in person. So this is kind of yeah, face to face. Yeah, we got a lot of things to discuss and bring yeah. out. But yeah, we're was good. Was good, man. Uh, bro, I didn't even think we we're gonna be able to get it done today because uh, just some busy stuff, everything going on. But classic dragging ass fashion, we pulled it off though. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Mm-hmm. It's we're recording. So dedication. Dedication to the craft. That is ugliest form. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So we uh every time me and Sky talk, he tends to ask me topic. Just one word question, topic. Mm-hmm. And uh we were throwing a few back and forth like, Oh, we're gonna figure this out but the more we talked about it, it's like, you know, it's been a while since we podcast. It's been a while since we put out an episode. We are in season four, mm-hmm. and I was looking at the uh, the playlist on, on YouTube, and we have one episode, and we're already in the fourth, <laughs> fourth month. Yeah. So, it's <laughs> a little jank. We got well, we got to get back out there. The, I think. the month's been just rolling. Yeah. Yeah. W- whether... Whether you're prepared or not, time does time stops for no man. Yeah, and uh, here we are though. Like I'm pretty, pretty excited to have Sky here in the quote unquote studio. Uh, we got the good mics out right now, mm-hmm. the good mics. Uh, but for any guests that are that have been here, we would have the good mics out for everybody. But these uh, these two, I've only got two, which mm. hopefully. A uh, bit of news for everybody listening there, the, our fans, whatever, whatever you want to call yourselves, avid listeners. Um, we may or may not have a grant on our hands that I applied for nearly half a year ago, maybe longer, <laughs> and I got word today that it might have gone through. So, waiting on microphones to have enough of the good ones to have for everybody. I think we've. Uh, I think we I think we may have some new equipment on our hands real soon. Oh yeah. And uh the whole thing that I was putting out on the application was we just want to improve our sound. Mm-hmm. We want to uh mm-hmm. we want to uh increase our listeners, uh our our audience. But you know, I I think uh Joe Rogan was saying it best is like you got to continue to create content, just keep coming back. We've discussed that several times. Mm-hmm. And I started to worry, you know, in the back of my head, like, when are we going to do another episode? This is, we're we're dragging a little here. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think it's up to us to kind of, what do they call, I don't want to say bear down. We're we're in wildcat country. Maybe maybe that's the term. We are trying, we we need to just buckle down, I'm going to say buckle (laughs) down, bear down, whatever whatever you want to call it. We got to, what do they call it, put rubber to pavement? We we got we got to get it going here, mm-hmm. and I think uh, I was looking at the numbers on our playlist, and I think uh, season one was something like sixteen episodes, maybe fourteen. Season two, we had forty eight episodes, something like that. Wow. Season three, it was down to like twenty six, I think. And then I saw season four, and it said one. So I was like, we hey. we need to do something about that. I'm I'm not trying to put us on no, any kind no, of limit, no, no, no. like oh we got we got to get so many done, but I think we do need to start getting it done. Yeah, a little little more regular here. Oh yeah, especially, uh-huh. especially for those just waiting on the new content. Like where, where is it at? Where yeah, is it at? yeah. I mean, I when the, somebody says how's the podcast going, and I'm like, uh, we're kind of. Yeah. And the and all they say is yeah I kind of saw you know <laughs> um, because yeah we somewhere in the timeline of yesteryear and now we were yeah. um, I think we had more free time mm, and, definitely um, jobs were kind of different 
And so I, I mean, I, I, I just think we're, you know, trying to be outside, but you know, still making the time to be um, putting in the the time for the the pod. So yeah. Well, we'll get at it. We'll yeah. get at it, and then I think too the. Uh, we're so wanting to get a lot of more interviews, and I think that's kind of what we're hinting at too. Is um, we got some new mics, and mm-hmm. you know we need to use them on on our guests. So yeah. any guests that want to come, or anybody interested that wants to definitely sit with us and chat it up, you know, like we're we're all ears. But yeah, I think yeah we we're kind of aiming for a specific. <laughs> setting and it's not always going to happen so yeah but I can't sit here and just make excuses of, you know, <laughs> so, uh, I'll try I'll yeah, keep trying uh, um, yeah well what's good what's new um, this is well uh, we decided to do a recap episode okay we, we kind of yeah, have this yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we have this ongoing theme here where at least once a year, I think we've done a recap or even made predictions for the year. Mm-hmm. There's a lot been going on. Oh yeah, for sure. Maybe, maybe it's because I've been passing the TV a lot in my in my cafeteria at work, but seems to be a lot more uh, school shootings. Seems to be like just in the short time since school started, and now like it's like man, mm. seems to be increasing. Like maybe people are seeing. Younger people are seeing, you know, what the results. They're bringing attention to stuff, and they're going out and causing these acts. Uh, there's all this stuff going on with Trump. You know, he's still running, but they're trying to uh, lock him down. They're trying to lock him out. Mm-hmm. I heard somebody saying they had a theory that uh, the Democrats didn't really have anybody to put up against him. Nobody that could truly tell the truth the way he does, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I. It's almost like if he's in jail, then he can't be president. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. well, let's just throw him in jail. But uh, I mean, Trump's still doing Trump stuff, you know. Yeah, so it's, definitely. It's, it's still a little scary because it's like there's a small, and I'm not even supporting that little hope. But it's just like I hope he doesn't come back. Dude. I hope he doesn't come back. I'm, I'm fixing your wire. I'm not. I'm not adjusting the mic. You're doing oh, fine. Oh, okay, yeah. You can hear um, you just fine. So, that's been one thing that's kind of haunting me. Is just like, yeah, he had his four years, but he still has an option to, I mean, it's a possibility whoever wants to vote for him can vote for him, and he, he could be president. I'm not trying to say that's what I want, but it's just, yeah. if he's a candidate, and... There's crazy people that want him to be there, you know. Then, well, damn, what what does that look like for for the world? Um, for for me, I think it was like during his election when he got in there, it was like, oh, it's him or Hillary, and it's like, ah, I definitely don't want Hillary. Let this goon. I was, I think I was even saying previously in our podcast and predictions, I was like, ah, he's he's a He's a douche slash devil type, you know, but I know it and he owns it. You know, mm-hmm. he knows it. He owns it. He never really ha- hid the fact of who he is. And uh, Hillary is like a trained killer. She slips in to every group and circle there is and, you know, just slides in the grass like a snake and you just never know she's there. So, and she's like old government business as usual so I think there's a big part of why she didn't win like mm. it's like no we don't want the same status quo we don't, we're not trying to keep all that mm. and I think that's really why uh, Trump got in the first place it was like people were tired of the way things are the way the government's been running and Hil- Hil- Hillary would have just picked up where she, you know where it left off mm. you know would have just continued now I'm mm. thinking uh, uh, Democrats are like, oh, we got good old Joe Biden. He's going to bring us back to the better days. And then uh, he's, he's just slopped it up day one. You know, it's like, infla- all I can say, which I've been saying ever since, was inflation. Uh-huh. 
With inflation, inflation, inflation. I think it finally clicked for me when I tried to get one of those big packs of eggs, and it was like 12 bucks. Like, I was like, like holy shit. Like, no, I think it was a dozen. I think it might have been a dozen for 12 bucks. Yeah. And those big packs were selling for like 27 something, like yeah. 30 bucks. And I remember on a good sale, I got them for seven bucks. Like a five dozen pack. I was like, mm. God damn, like. Cheese, milk, all that, just flying to the roof. And I and I always go like, all right, wh- where does that end? Is it in it? Like, really, is it a president that fixes that, or is it really like the entire global economy that affects it? Because we, you know, we, I always hear about the reserve. Mm-hmm. You know, our reserve of oil, and that oil kind of affects every business because we got to transport things, and you know. Uh, I don't think the U.S. wants to use its own oil. They want to go out and get it somewhere else. Mm. So that kind of brings all these other world powers into play, mm. which I think is a big part of what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm bringing up too many, <laughs> too many subjects at uh, one time. No, day. no. I, I think I'm... It feels like I feel China is more of a... Got stuff cooking that is sort of... Bro, like, I've been saying that. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know you uh, say that, I, but I've been seeing it too. Um, just what they have versus what we have. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they pretty much talk about. There's all this like, if there is a war, almost like kind of predictions and. Yeah. I mean, that's not. That's not good to talk about, but that's what they're talking about. So mm-hmm. it's sort of. Do we do it to ourselves by mm-hmm. kind of hinting that it's going to happen, or you know, is it you know just we know it's going to happen? You know, we're we do war. You know, that's yeah. just a part of the, the I, way of the, the way the, the way the world works. I drop the term capitalism all the time. It's like a dirty word to me. And it's like it's disappointing. Like, the capabilities that humans have to yeah. create. Like, yeah. if you can think it, next year it's going to be in reality. It's going to be real. They can make it. Yeah. And with that kind of capability, if we could get over our differences and just freaking work together mm-hmm. as, a, like, a global economy all on the same page, I, there's no telling. You know, the sky is the limit. If you really want to say that, the sky is the limit, and by that I mean space, yeah, travel, everything, everything rides on it. If we were to go together, but we don't. Nah. Uh, it, it's almost in our nature to fight or compete. You know? Yeah, well, compete. Yeah, and and I've heard you know competition's great because it causes you know people to really throw down and you know fight for the same cause, like like mm. the space race. You know, it created all these advancements in technology, and so does war. All right, like so does war. Like, let's not forget that the internet was born out of a DARPA program, hmm. you know, Department of Defense. Yeah. Um. So, it, it always drives me crazy to think like we go with cheaper, crappier stuff because it means it's going to have to be replaced. We're going to continue to make money off this idea instead of making it good. Or making it fast and cheap and breakable. Mm. And, and, you know, it's like, uh, how many problems, world problems, that people face? Hunger, you know, famine, uh, 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 illness. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's get into COVID here. Like, the, like, how much could that, how much of all these problems we have could be solved if money wasn't the agenda? Mm-hmm. If making more and more money the next year, like, I remember working for the hardware companies and it was like, um, they would set a goal. Wow. Like, all right, this is, this is, this is our goal. We're going to, we're going to do better than we did last year. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's go for it. Let's do better sales. Let's do better customer service. We'd go for it and we'd hit that mark and go beyond it. And they're like, oh, hell yeah. Success checks all around. Here you go. You get a piece of the pie, you know, like. Make it all built it up all good, but then what they do? They damn near d- doubled the next goal. Mm. They're like, oh, oh, we d- you guys did so good. Let's do it even better next year. 
but what they were really doing was setting it so high that it would be impossible for us to reach it. Yeah. And the point was they didn't want to pay out every time. They just wanted to get us motivated enough that, oh, maybe you could get another check. But you don't. Yeah. And then they'll lower the goal again, and then we shoot for it. And if we get it, cool. If not, maybe they escaped without mm. giving us another set of checks. Yeah. So, same with pharmacies. They're they're gunning for the dough. One pill will cost, you know, a certain amount one year. The next year, well, oh, maybe we could double it. Maybe we could triple it. See how much money we can make. And then let's see if we can double that. Like, yeah. And it's the same product. It's not like they've improved it. They're sell- They're selling the same crap. But now they want to raise their value because they can and because they did. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of the source of capitalism altogether. It's like more money, more money, more money. And that causes pain and hurt mm-hmm. all, ac- you know, all across, especially in the people who actually need that medicine. Yeah. And then I go back again. Would these people even be sick if the real goal wasn't making money? What if the real goal was solving the problems, making people live forever, healthier lives, yeah, better quality of life? Hmm. You couldn't continue to sell medi- medicine to somebody if they get better. Yeah. Which just blows my mind. It seems really dumb. Well, I guess that there's an end goal for every individual... But then, as a whole, we don't necessarily, like, kind of have it together like that, you know. Everybody's kind of focused on their own mm. mortality. And, yeah. I mean, yeah, we want to be rich, but at what cost? Because, I don't know, some people get the short end of the stick. Yeah. Uh, one one group that has the power to make that money, the pharmaceutical companies, whoever, mm-hmm. like they're the people in line to make the money. They get richer and richer, and the people who are making them rich are paying out of their pockets. They're getting poorer and poorer, mm-hmm. and the divide between the super rich and the common man gets wider and wider. Yeah, until suddenly somebody who used to be middle class can't afford to feed their kids now. It, it blows my mind. It's disgraceful. Yeah. Well, I think it too, like, you know, if you, you know, more money, more problems. It's like what they yeah. said. Biggie. Yeah. You know, like, we get a, we get, we move up this t- the food chain and then we want other things and then those things require more money and mm-hmm. so, I guess, how we measure the quality of life and how we're all I guess what is it that we want out of this experience because if it if it's not to be rich then what is it but then if it is to be rich what are we getting out of that because I don't know some I guess I I look back on my times and, and I've said this a lot of before where it's like some of my best times are when I was broke mm. Mm. and then well not all of them but you know mm. just how you can still be happy with not much mm. but yet there's this other side of it where Everybody's cutting. I don't say they're cutting corners, but they're they're not thinking about a whole lot of things. It's just sort of more money, mm-hmm. more yeah. revenue, and it's like the the shortcuts and the I guess the humanity side of it, where we're not looking out for each other. We just want the money. Mm. I don't know. It's Feels like it's going to be a another lesson that we're going to have to learn, rather yeah. than yeah, because um, we're not unified like that. Yeah, you know, we're not. That's sad. It, sad it is to say that. Like we don't got our stuff together like as a whole. 
Yeah. And we'd kind of do it to ourselves by, you know, going against other countries, you know, mm -hmm. or comparing what they got versus what we don't got. And, yeah, just sort of, I don't know. And America is it's kind of like a little bully itself. So it's almost, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm like, man, when's... When is someone going to show America, or when are we going to learn our lesson? Because it's like, it's just kind of, I don't know, I mean, I'm not saying we deserve a lesson or we we need to be put up in our place, but it just seems like there's a lot of stuff that we're doing that is harming us rather than hmm. making us want to live longer or... Maybe strive for a high quality of life. I mean, mm. not thinking about money, but just, I guess, what is it, what is it all about? Mm. Mm. I, I think what's kind of interesting is perspective. Like, um, I've been poor all my life. So, like, the idea of rich, it's like, man, all the things I can't do. Unless I had money, if only I had some money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. More, more vacations, more trips, better cars, better food. You know, it's it's uh, it's like the, the greener grass on the other side of the fence. It's like I, I didn't ever had it, so I want it really bad. And then you kind of think about people who have been rich all their lives, like the the generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Their fight is to keep wealth and to keep others from having it. So yeah, they don't. You know, they don't have to share it. <laughs> and like, um, I was think, I think, well, I was just thinking about it while we were talking here. Was that it's kind of funny that right now I'm talking about inflation. I'm th talking about food. We just got some food right now, and it was, I can guarantee you, it was at least forty, thirty-five, forty bucks for one meal. When it, never, it wasn't like that before, mm -hmm. but you know. Like well, the the funny thing is, like right now I would hunt for a deal. You go out, get some food. Oh, I want to get it as cheap as I can. Yeah. But then if you were to buy a car that's the cheapest one you could get, it's gonna break down on you next week. You know, it's like it's not great. That's the funny thing is, like with food, I would love to get a deal. Mm -hmm. I'd hunt for it. Got to get it. Got to get the cheapest one. When damn near everything else we. You know, buy like oh, I don't want the cheapest one. I can't afford <laughs> the most expensive one, but I don't want the cheapest one. Yeah, it has this, it's a piece of crap. But then you go, all right, uh, go out to eat. You're like, damn, I better save a couple bucks. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I, I don't know. Like, uh, and then there's the rich where they wouldn't dare eat, you know, fast food at all. They're like, oh, fresh, organic, everything. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, you can afford to do that. You know, maybe a lot of people can't. Yeah. Well, I remember one of the the looters in the, the on um, January it was it yeah. the sixth uh -huh. uh -huh. the insurrection. Yeah. One of the guys that was thrown in jail was not eating because the food that the jail offered wasn't to his standards of. Oh, or his diet, you know, he couldn't eat what they were serving there, but it was like, wow. yeah, from from another perspective that goes through that system, they don't have, three, like three they, square meals, they can't even day, yeah. say this is, maybe they can, but they ain't gonna, I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just kind of silly, and, and, mm -hmm. and and the way we think of things and yeah I mean I don't know it, it's I mean even growing up like you know with, with your grand, grandparents or your, you know not having all those options on what to eat or getting like today like you know we're in the city so we can go eat out or yeah we have all these options but like you know growing up you know you didn't <laughs> I can imagine I can't even imagine trying to tell my grandma hey I ain't eating this or yeah. 
This Good isn't luck. this isn't organic grandma, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, this is, I only do soy, uh <laughs> grass fed, cow you know, it's just all these these um high standards of whatever and, mm-hmm. and how it wasn't always um not so much we were we were picking now, but it was you know, you kinda got what you got and and that was it. It wasn't yeah. you know, no debate on it or wasn't no protest, you know, mm-hmm. it was just sort of like I'll get slapped if I tried to Oh yeah. To to do any kind of silly stuff like that because it was like this is I work hard for this, you know. Yeah. This is this is the this is what's feeding us today. So, mm. I mean, so I mean, I I guess it's like you can relate, but then you also can't relate because there were times where I didn't want to eat what we we're eating, but then it was like also so like that's all we can eat, you know. That, that's what that's what we're eating today. Mm-hmm. Um. But like I don't like cheese, so I remember my mm-hmm. grandma would do squash and cheese, and I love squash, but I didn't like the cheese. So mm-hmm. sometimes I would just like just swallow it, just yeah. just like so eat it right away and not taste oh, it. But it was like a shot, huh? just because I didn't like the cheese. But that's just because I mean I'm picky. Mm-hmm. We're all picky, but like some of us can't <laughs> complain mm-hmm. too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hearing you describe those days, man, it sounded, it sounded like trauma to me. I was like, damn, like, fuck. I, I think you were saying something about, like, eating the cheese and then drinking water like you're taking a pill. Something like that, wasn't mm, it? Yeah, because, I mean, like, I just, I never could, I don't know what it is about cheese that just grosses me out. Huh. And, yeah. And I, I can't get enough of it. I mean, just, I'm not one of those. Huh. I'm, not, I'm not like you. Uh, well, you're <laughs> built different. <here. laughs> that's all right. I think that's why this works. Um, but yeah, uh, some of us didn't have that option to be picky, mm. and if we did, we we kind of didn't get shit for it. But it was sort of like. We'll starve. That was my, yeah. I can hear my mom saying, well, we'll starve then, you know? Well, you can starve. <laughs> you can starve for a like I cook this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I've brought this up before, I know, but I'm going to do it again. You know, hey, we we have so, many, so much content now that uh, there's a good chance you guys might have missed it, so I'm going to say <laughs> it again. Um, uh, way, way later, so there's me growing up. Same thing, like oh, I don't want, I don't want to eat it. Like I, my thing was the little snap peas still in a pod that comes in stir fry. They're like flat and they have like all the little seed pods in there. I couldn't yeah. do it. <laughs> I remember falling asleep at the dinner table once where my mom's like, "You're gonna eat it or you're gonna stay there." Mm-hmm. And I fucking I stayed there until I was asleep at the table. I didn't do homework, you know. I didn't do any of that. And I think it was like a battle of the wills that maybe I want maybe I didn't but I didn't I, I didn't have to eat those yeah. I didn't in the end and uh but that wasn't what I was trying to bring up again was uh as a kid I ate and I always felt like oh we, we're eating pretty well you know I, I didn't have many examples to compare with everybody like I'd go and eat at my buddy's house and it'll be good and it'll be good at home but when I grew up and talked with my mom she's like you know we ate she's like um, I was talking about my paychecks compared, and then she would compare it to her as a, her paychecks as a teacher on the reservation. And um, she told me the way she put it was like, uh, "We ate a lot of rum, a lot of hot dogs and, ma- and macaroni and cheese." Mm. And when she said that, I was like, "Wow! Like uh, I, I love hot dogs and macaroni and <laughs> yeah, cheese." Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't know that we were poor. Yeah, I didn't know we were starving and that's what she could afford like to keep us all fed and do the job but in her mind I was like oh we're, we're broke and I gotta make ends meet so we're gonna eat a lot of hot dogs and macaroni and uh-huh, cheese uh-huh. and in my mind I had no clue I wasn't aware of it I just really liked macaroni and cheese yeah. and hot dogs I still do I'll say that right now <laughs> it's, like, it's like wow Pers- again perspective well I guess I mean so there's Oh, 
want to say poor food, but it's like there's food that's well poor people eat, but yet it's still good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but make it work. Make it work. Throw yeah. some cheese on it. Uh, uh, throw uh, some cheese uh, on it. Well, again, I guess use love. You know, when you're yeah. cooking it, yeah. I think that was sort of what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but then I also know that, like, I think of like my grandma that just knew how to cook. Like, her, mm. they just had it. Just had the skill. Yeah, to where they could make anything taste good. Mm. Uh, I think, I think that when growing up it was different because, um, you know, my mom was going to school and we were kind of coming home early, so she was sort of like, you know, teach us stuff to cook, and so yeah. food would be done when she got home, and then we all ate. So like, nice. I think you have a little bit of appreciation when you cook it. Yeah, for so sure. I think we were cooking our our own food pretty young. Yeah, and I, even even I think of like my brother, like he's a way better chef than me. But I think he also uh, uh, had the skill. <laughs> you know what I mean, I, I think there's some people that are just chefs. Yeah, I mean they're. They got it like that, you know, opposed to somebody else like myself where you know, I might get lost. I might get lost in, in the sauce of, of, <laughs> of, of what, what's all there because, yeah, it's a, it's a, I don't want to say it's an easy thing to do, but it's, I guess, to make a meal and for it to even be co cohesive and... Mm. Gel and just get all the elements. <coughs> I did tea. That was my yeah. specialty. Was the cinnamon tea. The so cinnamon tea like, maker. You make the tea. You know? Nice. Uh, because you no, know, one time uh, this is a story. Is uh, you know the shake and bake. Uh -huh. We did a lot of shake and bake back nice. in our days. Uh -huh. uh, I read the instructions on. Or no, 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 no. I did. I think I was trying to do chicken. Shake and bake, but I was using a beef recipe, uh -huh, and uh -huh. so the numbers weren't matching up. So uh -huh. when I did my chicken, it wasn't done. Uh -huh. So like, you know, everybody kind of like, uh, <laughs> you make the tea. <laughs> <laughs> just, just you you stick to the tea, guy. Yeah. You, you, you did tea really well. Let's yeah. just keep you on tea for now. Huh? Yeah, our, our spaghetti. Um, French bread, garlic. Okay, nice, bread, yeah. nice. So I think garlic bread is one of my one of your, something one of special, your deals. Yeah, specialty. But do you do you think if that chicken didn't come out raw, or if it was a chicken recipe for the same thing, like do you think if it came out better, they would have said the same thing? Oh, I mean, like you think, oh. like like you're saying, oh, my brother's a chef, but like, um, no, no, I think. Prior to that incident, I think I had done good, uh, and then one day, I think I was, wasn't paying attention, or just, uh, I fucked up, and then, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think that, they still bring it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, <God damn. laughs> it's still a... This is not raw like Sky's chicken, right? <laughs> it's still a lesson, man. <laughs> Learn from his mistake, man, because that was gross. <laughs> God damn. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think even now, like, not so much that I don't trust me, but I... I wash the dishes. I, I think I'm, I'm more of a dishwasher. Hmm. Hey. Dump the trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh the yeah. trash looking full. I got you. I got yeah, <laughs> my time to shine. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> my moment. Get back, everyone. I got this. You don't know how to do it. Get back. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. this. Watch. You can't do this. Learn something. Yeah, learn something from me. Watch. You might learn something. So yeah, I, I guess I never got promoted. Mm. 
Uh, I don't know. That's, I, I have a weird relationship with food. and huh. I mean, even now, like... Um, like, I don't really have a schedule. I just kind of... I'm spoiled. Like, I... You know, I, I live in my house, but, like, sometimes I don't plan on what I'm going to cook there, or mm. I can just go to my mom's house, and they're cooking something, and yeah. I'll eat what they're eating, or yeah. right now I'll roll up to Tucson and have dinner with my friends, you know, so yeah. I kind of, I'm not really on a schedule versus, like, I say, like, my brother, you know, he has his daughter, and... I think when you're a kid, you kind of have to maintain a regular diet, like, you know, just the time we eat, just the time, yeah. you know, yeah. which I love, but, like, now where I'm just this wild bachelor, <laughs> getting crazy, you know, <laughs> nah, just kidding, but I, I don't, I mean, I could be eating, I don't know what I'm eating next week, but, like, it's just. I don't know if I like that or if it's just how it is. Because, you know, like, we started practicing Mondays and Wednesdays again. So, like, I get home pretty late. So, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm just, I'll eat whatever, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just when things change, it just, it affects how, yeah. how there's not a consistent, which maybe that's my problem. But, like, yeah, it's always, it's almost like a surprise. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've been living by myself for, I've been here since December at this apartment, and uh, I get my boy on the weekends, so, like, I gotta, I gotta make him breakfast, I gotta make him some dinner. Mm. You gotta feed him. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta do something for him, you know? But like when he's not here, I don't, I don't really eat. I don't eat. I don't cook. It's like, yeah. I'll be. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say I don't. I don't deserve it. But it's like I don't. I don't I'm not. I'm a no frills guy. Like I don't need some fancy dinner to be okay. Like a, yeah. If I don't have people to cook for, I'll make the bare minimum. To keep me alive. It's like the Matrix and they're eating that slop. Uh, yeah, that goop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tasty wheat. Yeah. You know, it's like that. I, I'll get by on some noodles, you know, and maybe, maybe a little piece of meat that's been in there, you know, or something like It's like whatever I got. Yeah. And it's funny, like, I, uh, I've been talking with uh, people at work. And every now and then I ask my co oh, what's for dinner? What are you making tonight? And they're like, oh, I'm going to... I'm gonna make tacos. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make that. And most of them, they all got like their kids they're going home to, and they, they got their families to feed. So it's like I got plans to make this, this, and that. They don't always do it, but it's still like, oh, this is that's their life. And I come home, and it's like, eh, what do I got? Yeah, Looking yeah. Looking around, like you were talking about uh, your grandma knowing just how to make stuff. Yeah. And I was thinking about my mom. She. Uh, she was the second oldest out of nine kids, and so she, and and my gra my grandparents they kind of made kids in groups. So it was like three and then three and then three, uh -huh. and so my mom was basically raising the the groups of three after her, and um, that's she told me that's where she got her skill was, you know, my, money wasn't always coming in, and when it was, it was like you you had what you had in your pantry. So she learned the skill of looking in a pantry mm. and just making what she had to do to feed all these kids with her, you know? Yeah. His mom's working, dad's working kind of thing. And and that's her. Like, I'll look at the same pantry and go, ah, there ain't shit in this house. Yeah. There ain't nothing. And then my mom looking there and she'll come out and she'll make a banquet-sized meal, you know? We're just like, oh, fool. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, wow, where'd you get all this? And it's like, same fucking pantry you would do, yeah. you know? Like, damn. So, yeah, that's, uh... Well, you, you know what? One skill. of the first things I learned how to make, like, as a meal, or uh, a staple dish uh -huh. in a meal, is, uh -huh. uh, is pinto beans. But it was really? in the crock pot. Uh -huh. You know, so, like, 
I guess if you're cooking beans in the crock pot, you know what you're eating later that night. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was easier to do it at the time because it's like, yeah, this is what we're eating. You even could even do it the night before and let yeah. it just slow cook and yeah. it's going to be all good by the time it's dinner time. So uh, beans in the crock pot was sort of, you know, evidence that, oh, okay, I, I can do this. Yeah. I can, I can hold my own, but, um, yeah, it's like not always... Like that takes preparation. That I mean, that's that setting that timeline. Maybe yeah. that's maybe that's my issue. Is just sort of like, hey, you're gonna eat at this time oh, here, yeah, yeah. and yet gather um, for the feast. I guess it's kind of yeah. My already saying where I'm gonna be. Mm. And is that is that the Aquarius in you? Uh, yeah, I think I'm uh, like all over why the place. Why you trying to tie me down? Yeah, yeah. Like, why, why are you trying to get me to just follow? You know, I want yeah. to. Yeah. I got shit to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a busy man. You busy. know, so busy. I might just work through the night. You know? I was a star. <laughs> I was a star. Where could be? Where could be? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's. Oh, I remember. Uh, being one of my specialties early because beans in the crock pot you know. yeah Dude. yeah I think uh, I, I don't I don't know which episode we did but I brought up the story of coming home from school mm-hmm. and then turning the corner it was the same place where you lived is where I lived and um, uh, behind the old high school and um I would turn the corner, walk, I'd be walking home from school, and I'd turn the corner, and I'd smell beans. Mm. And I knew, like, my dad took all day and cooked beans, and he had, like, uh, he, he was one of those guys that he had a job, this job, that job, this job, that job, he went job to job. And a lot of times, uh, he'd be home cooking, or, you know, I'd look forward to it, I'd turn that corner and smell those beans, and I'd be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it's cooking tonight, and we're going to have, uh, he usually made poor man's bread. Mm-hmm. So we, we'd have some... I, I just knew he'd have that. So the two together, that was that was a scent, you know, a smell. Yeah. I'll never forget. And I, I don't even know if he did it in a crock pot. I kind of feel like he never did. He'd do it on a stove top. Yeah? Yeah. I think this... I mean, I, yeah, with the stove, too, this thing, you know, it might cook faster, but you kind of got to watch it. Yeah, you got to be so, on it. Yeah. Stir that motherfucker. Yeah, I think the crock pot was probably the easiest thing for yeah. me because you don't got to watch it as much and just here and there, maybe add water or yeah. stir it here and there, but it was not, it didn't, it wasn't a lot of maintenance. That's the beauty of a crock pot right there. Um, I don't know why that's the only thing I know how to do. I feel like there should be a lot of other stuff I did in the crock pot, but that's the only thing that comes to mind. You should learn. Uh, we gotta sit down and do poor man's bread. And what you yeah, do, yeah. what you'll do is you'll spice up your bean night. You'll have some bread, some fresh bread too. Okay. That was that was kind of my specialty as I got older. Like, not so much as a kid, but as I got older, I started be- making breads. Yeah. They taught me. That. My dad made, taught me when I was still living at that house behind the old high school. So, sometime before I was twelve, mm-hmm. I was. And it had to be a couple of years in, so maybe about ten, eleven. Mm. I learned to make poor man's bread. Maybe the, I think that might be the first bread I learned, and I don't think he ever told me the recipe again. It was one of those deals where you just kind of slap some salt in your pour, in your palm, mm. and you just kind of like, yeah, it looks about right, and you throw it in. Yeah, and that's still how I make it today. What's crazy is like that. That was one of my specialties. Like, once he taught me that, I could do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make it as good as him in the beginning. But, like, that's kind of like if if we were doing some kind of soup or beans and there was going to be, like, a juicy kind of meal, you sop sop it up with some poor man's bread. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should sit down and you can spice up your uh, bean night with some uh, some poor man's bread. 
Would it only be... What if you wrote it down, would that still be the same as not you being right there saying, hey... Well, turns out I'm a writer, too. So I'll write you a whole big fat <laughs> paragraph of of details that yeah. I look for. Yeah. You know the, the Is that Bluebird? Huh? Do you use Bluebird or does it matter? I only use Bluebird. Right, yeah. nah. <laughs> Shout out to Bluebird. There you go, Bluebird. Uh, spot, they're going to sponsor <laughs> yeah. the Natives in America podcast. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'll slap a Bluebird logo up there in the corner for sure. Oh, yeah. You yeah. should use the you should use at least use their logo to do our logo. Uh-huh. 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 Let me think about that. We'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a cool they got a cool um bag. Yeah. It's recognizable for sure. Or maybe it's just the only one they know. Yeah. one of my aunts is rocking a apron when she was making Tilma. Uh huh. She was uh had a bluebird logos it sewn into it yeah and, I, and it was from the back it wasn't like they printed it off or something to yeah. made one they they t- they cut up an old uh, bluebird bag and made an apron out of it pretty smooth that's that's, that's what's up and I'm sorry it's probably some T.O. artist out there that's doing that for people but yeah well, I've seen many um, artists like make the aprons mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think this is I think aprons, but I know there's other stuff that that they make with the yeah with, the, with that bag. Iconic. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. I can dig it. But you. you oh, know. dude, I'll, I'll use whatever you yeah, have. Whatever. Like, okay. uh, it seems to be finer. I uh-huh. think they sift it uh-huh. or something. Like, it, it seems to make like a softer dough. I've made a uh, yeast bread with that. And it made really, really fluffy bread. So, you know, instead of getting the all-purpose two-dollar, five-pound bag and bashes, you know, the bottom shelf, whatever, <laughs> grab a decent-sized bag of Bluebird for a little bit more, maybe, uh-huh. and uh, you can make a couple batches. Yeah, and they'll all be fluffy. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna hold you to that. Let's do that. Um, my dad used to make a a bread, and I'm yeah. wondering if it's the same bread you're talking about. Interesting. But I don't know if he called it lazy. Well, you call it poor man's, man's bread. I right? call it poor man's bread. I think he called his lazy bread. Huh? But I don't know if it's the same. What's the trip? Is I could be mis mis remembering the name <laughs> since way back when, since before I was told. Maybe it was lazy man bread. I know it is poor man's bread. I'm pretty sure that's what he calls it. <laughs> I, no, I think it's kind of the same. Uh, when, when, it, man when it was ready, lazy. when it was ready to start throwing in the pan, it looked a little bit. It kind of flowed a little bit like a pan, pancake uh-huh. batter. A little thicker, but yeah, same mm. concept. It runs. You kind of pour it into the pan. Okay. So I'm, I'm just asking, is that what you saw when he uh, was making I don't, it? No, I don't remember. I, I just remember eating it. Just huh. big and fluffy like yeah, that. Like, like big, like. Well, it, it was. Thick. It was kind of like a biscuit. Okay. Okay. But huh? Yeah, like you. You would be able to cut it in the middle and then yeah. put like butter and jam on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That that's, was that's that was a good rare. snack. Huh? But damn. I mean, that's interesting. You know, but, yeah, I always wonder when you talk about that if it was the same thing as what my dad called lazy bread. Huh. Well, what would make a bread lazy or poor is probably the same thing that it's like three ingredients, yeah, three or four ingredients, and you just slap it together. Yeah. In like half an hour, I could get you a batch of poor man's bread. Yeah. Yeah. Real simple. Real simple. So, simple for a lazy man <laughs> and affordable to a poor man. Well, what's the bread that is, like, like stressful, like, damn, this is a lot of work, this is too much? For me, it's my chumas. I can make chumas, but it's never what my aunts make. Mm-hmm. My aunts, they're all chumas makers. Yeah. They can all make chumas, and it's... it's it tastes right. They're 
paper thin, oh, but yeah. not so thin that yeah, they yeah. turn to chips, you know, the second you try to fold it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I do it, and it comes out like panties and states. And they're thick as fuck on the edges, and it's just <laughs> it's yeah. not good enough. So, like, I know what good it's not a looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's not nowhere near a circle. <laughs> Squares, you know, like U's and P's. A letter H. <laughs> yeah. When you really try to hold it right and throw it on there, and you try to really think about how you're holding it, you make a perfect thong every time. Oh, perfect man. thong. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think that's the one that stresses me out the most. Like, uh,. I think the one I'm trained most on is yeast bread because uh-huh. I've made so much freaking yeast bread. But, like, I, f- I could probably still count on both my hands how many times I've made chum with. And, you know, pra- like all the other breads, it takes practice. But my thinking is, like, I've got a lo- I've got some stiff competition for bread when it comes to chum with. Uh-huh. Like, all, all my aunts will let me make the yeast bread. They'll, they'll like, yeah, make... You know, tell him to bring some. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll bring it. Don't trust me on that. Yeah. But, um, you bring one janky chumma to the house, they'll feed that one to the dogs or maybe <laughs> meet, feed the fire gods, you know? They're like, oh, yeah, the Benji made this one. You're spe- we're going to hate this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, man, yeah. Oh, look how good. I'm going to paint this on the refrigerator. Like, keep going, man. Yeah. Keep <laughs> Just keep going, bro. You got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the most stressful. I think I think the most expensive might be the biscuits. I, mm-hmm. make, I make biscuits from scratch, and they require a lot of oil, like the shortening, mm-hmm. and milk. And that's the thing. Like, like, when you're trying to throw some bread together, you don't always have milk. And sometimes you don't have shortening, but because I'm the bread maker in the house, we almost always have shortening. Because nobody, e- even if people don't want to make the bread, they definitely want to make sure I can make some bread. Mm-hmm. So we, we definitely have the ingredients for bread. Has your time making yeast bread kind of given you confidence to stand in the kitchen with like other good? Mm-hmm. Seems like I can be. You might be intimidated with somebody that. Well equipped, and you're I'm speaking for myself, but just if I'm not a gourmet chef or have any specialties. Standing in the kitchen with people that know what they're doing, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna fall back and well, just kind of take whatever they need me to do. Versus like, hey, I'm hmm. right here amongst you guys. Like, what do you need well, me to do? That's, well, that's interesting. Uh, I got a I got a whole new perspective now because of the job I have. Mm. It's uh, my title is a cook too, and I don't I don't even really could explain to you what the ranks are in cooking, but like um, I'm surrounded by other people that have the, the title cook and chef and prep cook and all these like everybody's got their position, their special jacket. You know, things that they do well, things that they will help you with, and things they don't ever touch. Mm-hmm. So, as far as standing in a kitchen, it's very strange where I work right now because it's like we're all cooks. We're supposed to all be capable of running all the different positions. And then, even at the same time, some people who have been there for years are terrible cooks. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm not calling out anybody specific, but I'm saying you watch how they cook and you're like, I wouldn't feed that to my dog. Like, uh-huh. or, or like, or you look at him and you go, man, that's hateful. How much cheese you're putting on that? Or like, it's just like, man, yeah, you could put a little more on there. Huh. Come on now, you know, they'll give you a little pinch of fries and I'm like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> I, uh, I've been cooking a long time. And when I step into a room full of cooks, cooks, yeah, not chefs, but cooks, uh, personally, I'm not confident when it comes to that. Like, I, I've never been trained to chop onions or right or whatever mm-hmm. like that. I can get it done, but, you know, I'm not going to do it as fast. But I feel like I do know how to cook. And the thing that made me do okay in this job was that I was working. And... I, all my life, or maybe at some point in my life, I realized no matter what I do, if I'm going to be working, I want to do it good, hard, and I want people to say, who did this job? Oh, Benjamin did it. Oh, he did it good. 
Mm. I want everybody to be able to say that. So when I stepped into this kitchen, I took the rank of cook too, which I'm not even sure to the people who are ranking us would even rank me as a cook too. Mm. But this is where I started. Yeah. And um, through sheer will, I think I've become a cook there. I've grown to know the menu, to have confidence in everything I cook. And when I put food out, what I, my main goal is to go, hey, um, they're going to like this mm. because I cooked it. And that's, that's always been the goal. Yeah. And I'm at the point now where I'm pretty confident, maybe even a little cocky. And it's like, which, which I don't think you want to cook who isn't cocky. You know, somebody who doesn't think they're great at what yeah, they do. Yeah. You know, uh, which I, which I'm chock full of. I'm confident, okay. and I'll make you. I think, I think I'll make you a bomb ass sandwich or wh- whatever it is we're cooking. I'm gonna make it good. Yeah. Steaming hot, tasty, delicious, flavorful, crispy. If you, if it's supposed to be crispy, you know. Um, right. But yeah, like like I said, the I have no. In a room full of professionals or, or people who are supposed to be professionals, however you want to put it, in a room full of people in ranks and titles, and, you know, if if they're all trained the way they're supposed to be, I don't, I'm not confident at all standing next to them. But because it was work, I became confident mm. because I, was, I wanted to do a good job, which... I don't know, that's my answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I'm conf- I, be- I will become confident as long as it's work. And uh, I feel like I can stand next to decent cooks. Mm-hmm. I-, I wouldn't dare call myself the chef, sure. you know, which in French, and that's where a lot of really good food comes from is the French, is uh, chef Chef means boss. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not exactly sure I'm the boss in the kitchen. Yeah. But I think I do get respect for how hard I work. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Or at least, <laughs> 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 at least that's what I hold on to to get through the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hope. Oh, oh. Whatever we tell yourself at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Nice. Yeah. How will I? I yeah I I've never been there where you were talking about mm. but I stood outside and admired chefs and like oh uh, I just want to watch and yeah. I mean I like knowing that you know that it's made by somebody like, oh, they made this, they made the gym with the, mm-hmm. the pop was are good, you know. Yeah. I, I guess looking on the outside, same thing with your East Bay, like, oh, yeah. I guess the critic of it. Well, even that, too, like, maybe I'm just doubting myself, but even though, I guess who's to say anyone has good taste? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or One of my fellow cooks, he says that all the time. He's like, you know, taste is a very subjective uh-huh. uh, subject. <laughs> it's a very subjective thing. Yeah. Where one thing that tastes good to somebody or great to somebody can taste like they might be eating dog shit, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's all people's flavor. Now, uh, I think I've brought this up before. Maybe, maybe not, but it's always stuck with me. Uh, when I was uh, in high school, maybe middle school, I went to the cafeteria. Uh-huh. One of my cousins, she didn't work in the cafeteria. I think she worked in the office at the at the high school. And she was in line behind me. And I got my plate, and I immediately stuck my head over the plate and took like a big whiff, like... And I'm like, ah... Food and she looked at me. She's like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "Oh, it's disgusting!" I'm like, "You're like a dog!" Like, Get out of here. And it always stuck with me. And like later, as I l- grew to learn 
you know, science, maybe a little medical, that we only have five, I think it's like four or five senses of taste on our tongue. Uh -huh. It's like sweet, salty, bitter, and sour. So how is it that with all the food that's out in the, in the world, how the hell isn't it all just, oh, this is bitter, sweet, salty, sour? Uh -huh. And what it is is our sense of smell. So you smell the food. There's all. I don't. I don't know the numbers. I want to say billions. I want to say there's millions of senses mm -hmm. in your nose that pick up all these special little scents. So when you add bay leaves or salt or pepper or spices to your food, it affects those. Mo well, salt obviously goes with the salt. You know, bitter might be some kind of uh, vegetable. Yeah. But when you smell it all together, that mixes up what you're tasting it adds to it, it adds it, it creates more to just sweet bitter salty yeah and sour so damn long after I never got to give her shit back you know like yeah I ain't no fucking dog like, this is, <laughs> I'm doing it right I'm doing it right yeah. I'm smelling my food and making it better but I always wanted to say that cause <laughs> out there I think you know who you are yeah so, but at the time, why were you smelling it? Was it? Well, I, I was doing what I do now without purpose, but just uh, uh, food. Like, yeah, it smells good. Uh, I can't even remember what it was. Huh. And looking back, we weren't eating the best stuff, you know, for lunch. I kind of think. You know, a funny thing I remember is the. Back in the high school days when they introduced the salad bar. Oh. You remember that? Dude, I wasn't even there for that. I think, no, uh, maybe mm. maybe it was the last year. It was like a year after I left. They I brought, was so pissed. It was a salad bar and it had like, but it had like other stuff like peaches. Ooh. Uh, like croutons. So uh -huh. Cottage cheese there's maybe. A salad, yeah, there's a salad and there's all the little toppings. and Nice. Um, but yeah, the, the pizzas was a was like a, a little special treat. Nice. And I remember one day, um, I don't know if it was me or if it was somebody else, but it was they like no one had done it before, but it was like groundbreaking. But <laughs> I'm gonna say it was me because I'm pretty sure it was me. But it, oh. it was just we made a big deal out of it because it was like, what the hell are you doing? Uh -huh. But I got up and went and got seconds. Uh -huh. Oh, the celebration. Yeah, and oh, it's there. and it was like everybody was like, "Hey, you, you, you can't do that. Bro. You can't do that." You know that was. Let's do that here, bro. That's like nah, nah. Guys. But um, they put this here for us, man. That too. I mean, I. I don't know. I I can't remember, but it was just funny because it was like hadn't been done before. But uh, it was like, uh, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna go back and get some more peaches. Yeah. Um. Interesting. I could have swear you were there, but maybe you weren't. I don't remember any salad bar, but I remember being pissed that they got it. Right <laughs> yeah, there was like yeah. motherfuckers. Uh. It was like that that theater. That they built in Topawa. That was the high school. When oh, I went, uh, that was being built when I was in high school. It was just a pile it of wasn't, dirt. Yeah. It wasn't finished until after I left. After I graduated. Oh, oh that was the same for me too. Yeah. So I, I've, I don't, I'm pretty sure I've never seen the inside of that motherfucker. Okay, so that's why I, I mean I know that I got off sidetracked with the salad bar, but the <laughs> the smell, like this, our scent. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Like what if? I guess if our, we're taking a whiff of something, huh. I wonder if our our sense is like, oh, I remember this from past times. Oh yeah, or, oh or yeah. Is it like, yeah. I already know it's good because I just think about how close your nose is to your brain, huh. like how short those the nerve has got to be, like boom, straight to the brain. Then boom, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then in your brain, everything's all compact and together, and if you're exactly where your memories are. Like I said, uh, the smell of the beans as I turn the corner. Yeah, I can I can still hear uh, Andy Griffith. You know, 
I could hear that in my head. Yeah. I could see my dad. I could see the house, your house, my house, the same house. Your house I could see house. it. Yeah. I could. I could. I could remember the grass as I turned the corner. Yeah. I could smell the beans right now. I could smell them. What's a smell that you you don't like? Rotting flesh. Uh, huh. Which oh, is crazy because I always wanted to be either a cop. When I was really young, I wanted to be a cop. Then I met cops and it was horrible. But like, uh, I'm into medicine uh-huh. and I'm into uh, emergency medicine, uh, the EMT deal, all that fire. Yeah. I'm into that first responders. And I was like, damn, like, if, if you're going to have a job like that, you got to kind of have an ability to shut that off, right? Yeah. And I forget what the hell we were dealing with. One, one part was we were exploring the, uh, we were touring the hospital, uh-huh. the UMC. Okay. And we went down to, uh, the morgue. Well, we did go down to the morgue, <laughs> but I think my, now that I actually think about it, I think I'm going back to, uh, the smell of formaldehyde in seventh uh, grade. Seventh or eighth grade. That too was in power. It wasn't always the high school. But uh, I remember we dissected worms and uh, maybe starfish. What? Well, well, you were there. I know you were there. I think so it was a freshman. Yeah, frogs. Show that smell. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know we did frogs. Those frogs. And yeah, that formaldehyde yeah, smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then later for the summer, I think we were freshmen or sophomores that we went into the morgue. And uh, I think I think they called it something else, the the uh, medical examiner's office. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it was called. Or, or it has a different name. It wasn't the morgue, but it was it was where they would take. Uh, if somebody had like an inflamed pancreas or you know something, and they took a, a, a sample of it, they'd send it to this place, and that's where we went. And it was crazy because they had a jar full of formaldehyde, full of hearts, human hearts. And on the counter when we got there, there was a bowl with water flowing over it. And it has packed full of ice, and it had a brain in there. And then they walked us into the freaking freezer. It wasn't a huge one, but it was like for that office, that room, uh-huh. there was a freezer. And they had beds in the walls. They had uh, gurneys like on the ground in the in the middle of the freezer. There was body bags on the, on the mm-hmm. gurneys. And then what, what really blew my mind was there was a bunch of little bags. Uh-huh. And they told us they were like donated arms and feet and hands and all this crap. You know, I, I don't know their yeah, yeah, yeah. but but it, was, it painted a picture. Uh, but anyway, that smell, rotting flesh, and formaldehyde, and and that that sounds like oxymoron because you're not going to have rotting flesh with formaldehyde. But those are two very distinct smells mm-hmm. that turns out I can't freaking handle. Mm. You smell something rotten, or at least lately, maybe my stomach's grown weaker as I've gotten older. But it's like. Whoop. Yeah, yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh. Yeah. Bad. So, when we were... And that was your question, wasn't it? Well, no. Yeah, that was it. But, like, um... I I thought you were going to talk about something, like, (laughs) (laughs) food-related. But, no. How how about my pee after eating asparagus? Uh, If you can get a good whiff of that. Oh, yeah. It's just that gross. Okay. We're getting getting Uh, dark there. uh, Um, (laughs) Food. Uh, We were taking menudo in the back of our car. Almost a full pot. We were doing it for the village, and we were trying to take it. I think I think it might have been All Souls. Uh-huh. Uh, we were taking it from the community building to somebody's house, or vice versa, whatever it was. And I I don't know if I was driving. I feel like I was driving because I want to say we were going just a little too too fast on the corners, or you know, hitting the bumps, on, you know, from the grader, where it kind of makes the little waves in the dirt road. Mm-hmm. We were hitting that, and we spilled all kinds of uh, menudo juice in the trunk. And little by little, 
it started to rot and turn. Like, you couldn't really like, oh, we're going to dump water into the trunk of the car. No, you just kind of absorbed. wiped it up as best you could. But yeah, it absorbed into the car, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was like summer, and it little, no, I guess that wouldn't be all sold. I think it might have been, uh, I think we were taking Menudo to the feast house for a, uh, a funeral or a feeding, maybe St. Anthony's, that sounds a little more uh, springtime. You were transferring. Either way, I had Menudo in the yeah, damn car. It, it spilled on the trunk. We tried cleaning it up, yeah, but like yeah. as the days went on, it got nastier yeah. and nastier. That freaking cow stomach uh, just rotting away in our trunk, and and it made the whole car smell. Uh, okay, so I'm good with that. I actually had rotting Menudo in my fridge like not too long ago, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like I had carelessly thrown something in there like in the fridge I think it was like a bag of cheese and uh, if I didn't watch it when it landed and apparently it dumped over the menudo and the menudo spilled throughout my entire fridge and, and I knew I didn't want to smell that so I went through and tore everything out wiped everything down took apart all the drawers and pulled the glass out and wiped that motherfucker and I was terrified of it becoming that smell that, that rotten cow stomach yeah oof um when we were in um I don't know when, we were young we lived in um Tucson in these apartments and I I don't I don't want to say what nationality or where they were <laughs> from but they would cook I don't know what they were cooking but they were <laughs> I don't think they weren't even underneath us. They burnt, were like they were cooking burnt hair. <laughs> <laughs> they were catty corners. Ah, oh, damn. They were like okay. the apartment next underneath. Uh-huh. But we uh-huh. could still smell this shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I just remember just that smell. Like I can still smell that smell uh-huh. and just uh-huh. being like they were eating it. That like that was a regular smell. In their house, that yeah, day. whatever they yeah, were cooking, probably. whatever the hell they were cooking, whatever <laughs> season they had, like that yeah. shit. And I remember even people walking by the apartment complex would just kind of be like putting their hand on their nose. Yeah, and really. so I was just like, this shit stinks. Like, but I mean, they're eating it, so mm. they must have enjoyed They probably it. smell it, and like me with the bees, they're like, oh yeah, mama's cooking, yeah. grandma's <laughs> cooking. Yeah, but that was a... Grandma sure makes good dog, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like rat legs. Yeah, you know, fuck yeah. Uh, frogs. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that that was what I was kind of hinting. I thought you would have said something like a, a, okay. a certain seasoning uh, or a certain uh, style of cooking or... But, yeah, these guys just... And it wasn't like, I don't know, I guess, is that, are you in the wrong for saying, hey, your food smells, because, I mean, you could have smelly food in there, you're not saying nothing. Huh. I drink, uh, I don't think it was mead. I drank, I drank somebody's, like, homemade brew. uh uh-huh. And beer is like rotted something sweet, something yeah. sweet, fruit, uh, uh, wheat, whatever you can get to from yeah. yeah, yeah. So it might have even been tea or kombucha, something like that, where they did it on purpose. Yeah. But like us growing up, you know, sun tea, you always have like a jar of sun tea hanging around somewhere. Somebody's got it in your house. You made it, you know, like like, uh, I I made tea too. Um, But like, you know, you kind of forget after you add the sugar, you you can't leave it out overnight. You know, you can't do that. Yeah. Or you can, but you know, little by little, it starts to ferment. Some people love that. I love drinking beer, but... Some rotten tea fucks me up. I can't do it. I, I can't do it. I think we had a neighbor at some point, and they were they were kombucha 
uh, farmer's market sellers. Uh-huh. And they brought some <laughs> over, and I gave it like a whiff, and I was like, now nah, your tea's turned, bro. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't yeah. drinking that shit. I'm like, that's what it's supposed to be. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, but no thank you. Huh. And, and that's them. Like they they were Americans, and they weren't from some foreign country or anything. It was they were they were here, and their thing was kombucha. Huh. I mean, kombucha doesn't even sound, sound like an English word to me. Like, what the hell is that? Yeah, somebody's traditional sour tea, and their their farmers market. Make I'm sorry if I sound ignorant. I don't. I don't know about kombucha. I just know it's fermented. Yeah. And it's not quite like beer. Well, different strokes are different folks. But Absolutely. I mean, but that's what we're talking about. Like, shit that yeah. you don't... kind of smells weird. It's like... Oof. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to eat that. Yeah, my... Uh, I got some neighbors right here. I don't know where they're from because I, I rarely hear them speak in their native tongue. Uh-huh. But the lady has, like, a grill that she keeps outside and... Almost every time she's grilling outside, she she would cook like a dinner like uh, every other day, like outside on the porch. And um, maybe it was because it smells so bad. It smelled really strong. <laughs> but she would do fish, like these big whole fish, you know, the eyes still on it, the head hey. still on it, the tail, the fin, like all of it, this whole. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, that was some strong stuff. Like there, there's no way that everybody in this building don't smell that. Like yeah. I can smell it. I close my door and I can still smell it. It's like ah. And but because I'm a cook now, I want to try it. Like oh, I'm, I'm gonna try it. Like, I, I, I'm thinking I might have to cook up some of my bread or something and bring it to them and like hey, what's up with the fish? Like what's up, make it with the fish. <laughs> Something. I don't know. I, I thought about yeah. it. Like, hey, neighbor, h- here's some bread. I got some extra. Yeah. And just see if one day they have some extra fish. They'll kick me some down. And and if it's as horrible as it kind of smelled, or maybe I'll never have it again. But I'm curious. Well, have you ever cooked something and like been like, this is horrible? I'm never. Oh I'm yeah. Not, I'm not cooking with oh, this yeah. ingredient. The worst. Um, Liver. <laughs> you you got one? Go for it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, just, uh, I, just I made really bad bread once. Uh, or I, I only made the mistake once, I think it was. Or I overdid it. What what it was, was I was still kind of learning from my cousin or whatever. She she was a big uh, believer in the measure with your palm kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, she always, like, when she poured salt in her hand, she did it and let it kind of spill over on her hand. Uh-huh. Well, I would do that like like when I would use the shortening, I'd use a little more like excess shortening. The, that is, and um, so you know, a little more water, maybe maybe a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. It always seemed fine. One day, I let it do a little bit more on the salt, like I was letting it spill over my measuring, mm. my little measuring cup. I did use measuring cuts because that's how I learned it, the recipe. But I always kind of did a little extra and just kind of experimented with what what a little more shortening can do. <coughs> yeah. And I did it with the salt once. And, like, I, I would make bread and it would be bomb and people would still say, oh, you know, you put a little, little too much salt in there. I'd be like, oh, you're crazy. It's perfect. One day, I let it spill over just a little bit too much on the scoop. And when the bread came out, I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat it. Tossed it. Yeah. No, I didn't toss it. We kept it. <coughs> and I think my dad ate all of it because he, <laughs> the old man, he he doesn't, uh, he doesn't taste shit. He, you give him his plate, he starts pouring salt on it. He's like, he's uh, like oh, yeah, motherfucker, where's, where's, where's the chilies at? <laughs> it's like, I know this needs more salt. I know how you cook. So, you know, like, uh, he, I think he wound up eating all the bread, but uh, it was like bread I couldn't eat. And huh. that was weird because, like, I'm, I'm I'm proud of my bread. I like eating it. I like having other people eat so that's it. That's overdoing that some, it on, yeah. a, on an ingredient. Oh, it's it. absolutely possible. Yeah. Okay. I was talking about, like, a, a certain ingredient that you're like, man, this is... Oh, okay. Uh, my medium, whatever. I tried to skip a step once with uh, biscuits and gravy, and I tried to use the package gravy. It was, like, brown gravy in, like, a packet. Yeah. And I made it 
per the instructions, didn't add any salt, and it was so damn salty. I, I would never use that shit again. Like, uh, I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying to think of something else. You you said liver. You had to have had experience uh, with that. No, I just. I I mean like, kind of similar to the um, squash and cheese. Like my grandma would make liver. Oh know, really? Just, not all the time. Like just. Every once, like, just once in the blue moon, she would cook her some liver. Uh-huh. And I just not liking the texture of it. Yeah. But I've never, I never, like, but I didn't, I wouldn't cook with it now. Cause huh. it's like, uh. Yeah. I, but but my, my mom would love liver and onions. And I didn't, I never liked it. But, like, what, what I kind of wonder about, too, is, like, Go back and taste it. Would it still be bad to you now? Uh, I think it would take me back to the to that, that times. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we're we're picky. We're uh. almost more picky when we're younger. Uh. Because I think of like kids not liking onions, uh. but then maybe them just not understanding what the onion brings to the plate. Because uh. they'll they'll eat onions not knowing, but. You yeah. tell them it's in there, and it's like, nah, yeah, nah, nah, yeah, yeah, like they like it until they find out all oh, there's onions in here, can't eat it. Yeah, so I, I think there's a lot of that going on, huh. but it was a weird texture, and it oh, was yeah, kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what's what's happening? It's rough, and it doesn't like chew the way like a good fatty meat. Yeah, would yeah, chew. it chews yeah. totally different. Yeah, yeah, and it had a different flavor too. It like, wasn't a steak, it, like a steak. Yeah, I know. Like, I would tear up a steak, you know? Yeah. But, like, with, with, with the liver, it was just, huh. like, working with it a little. Uh, but, um, I, I couldn't complain or... Huh. Kind of making me want to go out and just, just go buy to a decent and place and have them make me some liver and just try it. I don't even know. I've never seen liver on the menu anywhere. I... I Neither have I. But maybe, maybe I should look for some liver and give it a shot. Uh, cook it the way I cook all my meat. Salt, pepper, garlic. Maybe marinade, I don't know. But everything I cook, salt, pepper, garlic when it comes to meat. Huh. I wonder, with that and maybe a little onions, could I make a decent liver? Or would it be just as bad as I remember? See, so that's what I was going to ask you too, is like, when you're talking about the fish, like huh. is the the chef in you, huh. is it like, well, if you give it to me and I use it, cook it the way I'm gonna cook it, mm. I can make it taste well, better. I don't cook fish. That lady next to her, she's probably been doing it since she was a kid, uh-huh. or at least watching somebody do it since she was a kid. I bet between the two of us, she's gonna make a better fish. Which is really why I want to try it. It's like, man, I wonder wonder what they're eating over there. I want to try some. You know, she's probably got her own spices that I don't understand or know. That's why it's like assaulting on the senses. Mm -hmm. Uh, Huh. Huh. Yeah. I was talking about, like, like someone makes something and it's not that great, but you Mm -hmm. can say, give me those same ingredients and I'm going to turn it into something. Okay. Okay. Uh, when I when I first met my homeboy, I was working at a hardware store, and he came in as a secondary labor group to help us rearrange the store, like we we're redoing everything. Uh, after we kind of became friends quickly, like he talked shit to an asshole in front of everybody. It was cool. I was like, hey, I like this guy. Uh, we hunt, we joke about the same type of shit, you know, just busting balls on the job. And then afterwards, like, we just started joking, like, it was, it was cool. We were, like, instant friends. And, uh, one day, uh, I, I was going to breakfast with these two other dudes I was working with. Like, we would go, they they had, like, a tradition of going to, going to breakfast. Mm-hmm. And then when I found out, I was like, hey, l- let me roll, too. Like, I'll buy. I'll buy. Take me with you. So we st- I started joining in with them. And then one day, it was towards the end of working with this crew. Like, what the changes we were doing was almost done. 
and I invited my buddy over, like, hey, man, join us. Come uh, eat food with us. And the whole time he was just bitching, just bitching, like, oh, man, I asked for a fucking, I asked for a media. This is obviously a fucking well done. Like, this. oh, man, they, they put butter on the toast, but the toast is not fucking toasted. Oh, these fries, these fucking fries are soft and soggy. And he's just kind of <laughs> playing with it. He's not eating there. And I'm like, motherfucker, eat your fucking sandwich. Like, I was getting all pissed off at him. And now I work for him, and he's a chef, and apparently he was a chef that whole time, uh, and um, it bothered the fuck out of him, and I didn't understand it, it pissed me the fuck out, like, god damn it, just eat your fucking sandwich, like, yeah. somebody back there labored over that shit, you better eat it, that was my attitude at that time, now, it's almost bad for my health, almost... It's almost a bad thing how much I judge the food I eat now. When I go, like, at a fast food joint uh, that cooks the same yeah. kind of shit. Like, yeah, they have fries, yeah, I yeah. serve up fries. They, you know, I make a pretty mean uh, Reuben sandwich and a, a Philly cheesesteak. Uh-huh. And I get the, and I see, I go to these places where they do the same thing, and I judge the fuck out of Carried it. Off. I'm just saying, they're like, look at these fucking fries, yeah. man. These guys, they, they have no sense of what they're doing, man. They're like, these guys are, <laughs> these guys are fucking clowns, man. They don't eat this food. Like, same thing, same yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, it's terrible because <laughs> now, like, some of the, the regular foods that I could easily enjoy, it bothers me now, like. It, it, it's a it's a curse. Yeah, it, it, it's a blessing, and it, like I feel like I've I've learned enough to be somewhat gifted at cooking. But when I eat other people's food and they're doing it subpar, and I know what they did to make it subpar, mm. I'm just like, ah, oh, these motherfuckers! <laughs> what are they doing? These ass clowns <laughs> in the kitchen, like God! And I'm doing exactly what my homeboy was doing that day, and I and I'm him now. I'm just him now. Like I cook, I cook. Mm. I work in the kitchen, and I'm, I'm, bas- I'm basically a glorified fast food cook, but we we have a kitchen behind us, like a, a real commercial kitchen that's supplying everything we're, we're cooking, uh, besides the fries. But you can fuck up fries. Apparently, you can fuck up fries, too, you know? Like, if you're just a terrible cook, you can fuck some fries up. And, uh... So yeah, it, it's detrimental to my ability to eat fast food now nice. because I just—it's not nice. It's I, mean, not I, it's, uh, I don't know. It's like I, I get a plate and I immediately like start going over it. I'm just like, what's yeah. going on here? What, what are they cooking here? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like we got a we got this other chef. She's an older lady, and uh, you know, and young and old does not matter. If you're a good cook, you're a good cook. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a lady that cooks for us in our cafeteria, which must be a pretty hard job if you got all these cooks tasting your your cook food. But uh, that lady, that woman cooks with love. Mm. When when I see her back there by the grill, running the grill, the flat top, I order a freaking breakfast sandwich every single time because that woman can make a freaking uh, breakfast sandwich. Yeah, she doesn't hold back. She doesn't skimp. And when her, when you get the toast and her breads, they are crisp as fuck, and they crunch when you cut into it or bite into it. Good, yeah. Well, I I think that's part of the power is the uh-huh. recognizing when it is good. Oh yeah. Versus oh when it when it's good, I, I make sure to go and tell them, hey, mm. that was a good sandwich. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, for for hooking it up. And maybe they made it exactly the same way for everybody, but I feel a little special. Like they made me, yeah. they made me a good, good ass sandwich. Well, we talked about that with the popover, the uh, the popover episode, uh-huh. or the fry bread episode. The when it's an art uh-huh. versus when you need to be fed. Uh-huh. It's uh-huh. Sort of, this, yeah. this, you don't really know where to draw the line as far as. You know, going for the the chase versus, you know, just being fed to yeah. live on, you know, survival. Yeah. So there's kind of like this dual goal. And when it is about the taste and that experience, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of things you kind of can measure and weigh okay. out and... Yeah. 
I'm like that, like, even put all that, pr- not to say pressure, but that <laughs> kind of, mm-hmm. on, on that one person to be like, it's going to be good because they're making it. Yeah. But I was reading that, too, about a, a sandwich, like, your own sandwich, it's, it's not going to taste as good as the sandwich someone else makes for you, mm-hmm. because... You don't know what they did. But you're already kind of like yeah. you know what you're getting because you made it versus yeah. someone else that you know you're kind of getting their 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 work. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah. 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 Well, in in her case, when I see her, I know I'm gonna get good because uh-huh. I've I've had her food a lot. She cooks for me. Um. Huh. Interesting. If you know, like these rock stars or these celebrities, they kind of yeah. can get a, a personal chef. Uh huh. Yeah. I guess if you could have a personal chef. Yeah. It, well, would, what, what's interesting is, is somebody could get into one of those positions, uh-huh. and maybe they were good to get there. Maybe they busted their ass on the lower levels and then wound up up there. Not even wound up, but earned their way up, right? They worked their way up. Then they can get there and they either lose that spark or they're no longer doing what they enjoy. Mm. Like maybe they're running a bunch of young people cooking food that they don't give a shit about and now they're losing their give a shit about it kind of mm. care. They're yeah. losing their will to care. And then they wind up failing or destroying the restaurant, you know, or buying shittier product because it doesn't matter anymore. So that's what that's why there's shows like Bar Rescue and uh Hell yeah. it was Hell's Kitchen but the same guy, Gordon Ramsay going out there and rescuing yeah. uh No, what I'm saying is if you could have a personal chef, like oh who would you pick? Or like is there somebody or huh like you in all your years of Someone you could just have on deck to cook you something. Does anybody come to mind or anything of my uh favorite my, my, chefs? My baby's mom was a really good cook. Uh-huh. She uh that was part of how I fell in love with her too. She fed me really well. Uh, I got really big <laughs> when I was with her. I got really big, the biggest I've ever been. And uh I'll I'll always give her props on that, but uh also, my mom, mm-hmm. and I think it was that same skill, like, take whatever you got and whip it together. Yeah. I don't, I think through her, and I actually, this brings up what I wanted to bring up earlier, was uh, I tell my son, I, or I'm trying to get him, like, he's still young, so he doesn't grasp that I'm giving him gold here, I'm giving him gems, but I try to tell him. Like, he gets really mad. He's got my temper, but he gets really mad when he's not good at something instantly. He'll mm. watch, like, he'll watch somebody skateboard, and they're skating really well, and he's like, I could do that. Give me a fucking skateboard. And then he falls on his face, and he gets pissed because he couldn't just instantly be as good as Tony Hawk, yeah. you know? And I tell him, son, if you practice, you keep doing this again and again and again. And you keep getting up. Every time you fall or fail, yeah. you just keep doing it up. You can become that good. Maybe not Tony Hawk, but you can become good and do what you want to do if you keep going and trying. Yeah. And uh, I think the same thing with cooks. Uh, the same thing with my mom. Why, why she was such a great cook was she had, out of, it was out of necessity to begin with. And as far as I know, she's never had any formal training, but, like, I've seen her make, like, ranch dressing from scratch, like, you know, gravies from scratch, which is where I learned it from. Wow. Uh, which, you know, okay, gravy to a cook isn't, oh, it's, oh, it's just a gravy. But, like, for people who never cook and then they taste a really good gravy, it's like, man, how did you do that? Yeah. And to my mom, it was like, I had to feed these damn kids, you know. <laughs> and, then, and there was us who only ate, you know, mac and cheese with hot dogs instead of maybe what she wanted to eat, you know, like mm. liver and onions, you know, or yeah. something like, yeah, which was good to her, you know. So 
Uh, that is sort of a challenge, like the yeah. the taste buds of everybody versus just what I want. Yeah. I um, I think my sister too has got a talent that she hasn't realized yet. Like uh, I think her confidence level in the kitchen isn't high, so she doesn't believe in herself. Mm. But time and time again, she has looked up something tried to make it and made a concoction of wonder and beauty like uh-huh. like holy shit how, what did you do like you pulled this out of your ass what is this and then something simple if she's not confident it's not going to come out good yeah but she tries and she studies she's a very hard studier now <laughs> sorry Jen if you listen probably not but uh anyway um uh uh, what was the point of that? It was, it was, it was that you you put enough effort into it, and sometimes it clicks, sometimes it doesn't. Look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She she's uh like an unpolished jet, a diamond in the rough. Mm. She what's I think what's is, what's cool is uh she's a very different person from who she was when she was younger. Totally different person. I think having kids kind of does that. Mm-hmm. Getting responsibility or jobs or going to college, you, you change. Or just getting older. Experience changes you. Mm-hmm. And uh, through that, her cooking has become incredible and great. Uh, I like eating at her house, too. This is another good cook. Um, and you know, you know her from the cafeteria when we were in high school with Dorothy Jim. Uh-huh. I remember she was a good cook. She made really good good food. Wow. She was from my village, mm-hmm. where, where, or at least where I'm from now, yeah. Coalfields. Uh, shout out to Coalfields. And <laughs> yeah. That was Sky the South Coalfields. Uh, yeah. Another really good cook. And I think she had a lot of big family, too. Uh, so, yeah. Like necessity versus just raw talent. You yeah, know, I think I think somebody can come out of anywhere. Kind of like the whole point of ratatouille was, uh, you know, good cooking can come from anywhere. Yeah. And I, I can really appreciate that now. Now that I'm working on a flat top or frying food or freaking you know slapping ingredients together in a box so that it halfway looks decent. Yeah. You know, uh, it's a it's a weird transition to go from. Being un- blissfully unaware uh-huh. that there's some janky shit going on in the kitchen, to now where it's like I'm almost intolerant of poor judgment cooks or cooks that just just half-ass it. Mm. It's sad. It's sad to see because I've seen it like firsthand, standing right next to them while they're cooking or ate their food, and you're like, ah, like. The potential here, there's flavor, but it's not crisp or it's whatever. Yeah. And there's, maybe I'm a snob now. I don't know. <laughs> I've become the snob that I despise. Whatever it is, there's, I pay attention now when I get food and look, I open the box and I'm like, what are, what are they serving me here? Yeah. I, I don't think that was your point. No, but I mean, no, but it's, it's a... I wouldn't say a snob, but it's like your your responsibility to recognize all these things as a chef versus somebody that's just showing up to the table. Like I'm yeah. caring. There's sort of like a one sidedness when you're when you're not cooking, because all you can do is complain or you either eat. <laughs> like. Yeah. The chef kind of has to be responsible of all of that, and then yeah, I don't, and then still get critiqued. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to serve undercooked food, like raw chicken, raw fish, raw mm. beef. I don't like serving <coughs> that up, with the exception of maybe a steak, because somebody ordered it that way. Mm. And um, one thing that really grinds my gears, if you want to use that expression. <laughs> is when I put food on the grill and I'm timing it in my head like a, this is when it's ready this is like 
Maybe maybe I was just about to hand it over to the guy to put it in the plate, but I noticed it's not crisp yet, not there yet, so I leave it there a little longer. And then I turn my back to get something new, and then they snatch it up because they want it to be fast. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. Like, when this person gets that plate and it's not cooked the way I wanted it to be cooked, they're going to look over that window because our, our kitchen is wide open to the public. You know? oh, yeah. They can see us cooking. They can see the frustration. Like When I get a fucked up ticket, I make a face. Like, so that they can see it. I'm like, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> Just for fun. <laughs> that, that makes my day. But uh, it's like, oh, like, oh. You know, when somebody takes the food before it's ready, in my mind now, and I think it is what you just said, the responsibility, I'm like, fuck, like, they're not going to get it the way I meant it to be. And now they're going to go out there and eat it, and hopefully they still like it, but it's not up to standard. Yeah, there's a chance they might, they might not like it. Yeah. Damn. I'm a snob, no? I, I just realized it right now. I'm a fucking snob, no? Nah, I'm a nah, snob. but then... I mean, I, I... In my in my defense, I would hope that everybody out there expects that much from the people that are cooking for them. Like, like I yeah. tr- Like, everybody, you kind of... You kind of... Just to eat out, you kind of have to trust people to do the right thing and cook your food right. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's a weird service there. It's like... There's a lot of trust going on. You're putting, you're taking something that somebody handled and putting it in your body. And uh, wow! Like, so then, I, I guess you're genuinely upset. If yeah. The person on the other side doesn't enjoy enjoy it. their food. Yeah. Because I would, I would want good food. Yeah. And I get bothered if I'm up there cooking it and like maybe the cheese isn't melted all the way. That bothers me. Mm. Why? I don't know. I'm a fucking snob now or something. I don't know. It's like... I see cooks that that see a, a thing without melted cheese, like let's say a cheese steak, and you slap the cheese on top of it. They take it and throw it in the plate, and the cheese isn't melted. They're like, oh, it'll it'll melt in the box. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, fuck it. Fuck it. Next order. You know, oh, we're busy. This, this is the time to speed it up and just throw food. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. Uh, you ever it, use one of those flame things? I got one right here. What do you use it for? It's on the table. Uh, I use it to smoke, but uh, <laughs> 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 it's uh, it's used to. Uh, well, the only thing I've ever really seen it used now is the creme brulee. Uh-huh. As like a heavy whipping cream with vanilla and all this good stuff. And then it's like they cook, they cook the top of it ever so slightly and they create like a, a thin film of crystallized uh, uh, sugar on top. And that's the only thing I've ever really seen it used for. And then uh, the same guy I was talking about, my buddy, who's now my boss, and he's a chef. Um, he used it to light uh, wood chips inside this big, like, uh, they got these big cookers. And I'm sorry to everybody who's professionally trained. I wasn't professionally trained. I've been thrown into this for this job. Uh, it's a, it's like an oven slash steamer. Uh-huh. I think they call it a combi. But I'm not sure because it combines uh, regular oven cooking with uh, steaming. Uh. And uh, we were smoking um, a giant brisket, like like maybe 20 of them in this oven. Nice. And he was using that, that torch to light wood chips under it and make like a little fire. And then we'd turn on the air and it, it would choke the fire out and start smoking the meat. Oh. Which was cool. Something you never see every day. Yeah. It's something my buddy shared with me, like an experience, and he was teaching me how to do it. I had never smoked 20 briskets at one time in one oven before. Mm. And at the same time, I rubbed it down with a completely made from scratch, like a chote pepper with, let's say, regular pepper with salt and garlic and all that, like rubbed it down top and bottom, smoked it, and then cooked it for eight hours. Nice. Was uh, was an ex- incredible experience. 
But, you know, they, they taught more people to do it, so I never had to do it again, which kind of sucks. But it was like, yeah, I, I know how to do that now. Huh. Yeah, I, I totally forgot the other question I was going to ask about the... Well, you were talking about, what was it that you could... A mm, combi? Like it combines... Oh, no, oh, so now with Hit is the air fryer. What are your nice. thoughts on that? Great transition. Yeah. I can always depend on you to do that. Um, air frying technology. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know if it's new. Is it really? I don't know if it's new, but it's more hit. Yeah. I mean, uh, someone amazing. was talking about it on, like, even on the the groceries that we buy in the store. Yeah. There's an air fryer um, temperatures now for... Oh, yeah. Food, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. I've noticed that. I like that. So, I it's mean, pretty cool. It's, an, it, it's, it's a more common. newer thing yeah. as opposed to the microwave or the yeah. oven. So, what are your... Do so, you have any beef with it or... Okay. All right. Are you looking at buying one? I own two of them. Nice. Uh, I also have a microwave. I also <laughs> have a toaster <laughs> oven <laughs> sink here, all right? So I, I'm pretty sure New Wave, which makes all kinds of really cool cooking things now, uh, they had a air fryer before. <coughs> like before it was popular, they had it. Uh -huh. It was like they call it New Wave. So new technology is using, I guess, temperature waves, thermal heat, and convection, you know, whatever. I don't know. Uh, it's convection air with super hot air and then superheated air, and then you got, like, the have you, have you, oil particles that fry it. Have you ate anything that was air fried? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tons, like I said. I, got, oh, okay. I own a bunch. I, oh, I thought well, you were saying that sarcastically. No, no. You really got one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know what did it for me? I was chilling with my boy Joel, and we were getting faded. We were mm -hmm. getting all brewed out in the in the living room, and then like this girl, she was maybe twelve, ten. She went over, threw a bunch of chicken fingers in an air fryer, cooked it for a very short time, uh -huh. and was and a bunch of drunk guys sitting there. We were drinking all night. And she served us up. Like, this child served us up <laughs> crispy as fuck chicken nuggets. Now, she had overcooked them. But what's even more interesting about that is that the short-ass time amount that she pulled that off. In, so it would have even taken even less time to cook it, it just crazy, right yeah. versus where it was. It was, like, just a little overcooked. But when you're brewed, that, that doesn't mean anything. It's like, give me the chicken nuggets. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was crispy and crunchy. Yeah. And I was like, and I had already seen new uh, air fryers. You know, they've been advertising, I've been seeing it on the, you know, the home shopping network with TikTok. my mom. All that. Yeah, it's all over the place. You've seen all these fryers, and it's like, oh, there might be something to this. And then what actually made me, you know, buy into the technology, what made me go cross over into the dark side was uh, that experience. Nice. A little child... In my mind, she's a child. She's probably, oh, I'm an adult now, I'm 12. But well, anyway, that's the other side of the story. <laughs> uh, a child served up a bunch of adults, a good full-size serving in minutes. Yeah. And it was cooked. I want, For my drunken self, it was to, cooked to perfection. It was like, wow. Yeah. And uh, that, that there was something to that. I was like, wow. Safe enough. Like you know, you know, you, you don't want a kid handling the stove top or pulling something out of the oven. Oh yeah, it's dangerous. You're gonna get burned. I've been burned I, at my work now. I'm burned all the freaking time. But and you don't want a kid to do that. But for a child to cook a service up a, a big thing of fry, I think it was like fries and chicken nuggets. Quickly, the shortest time I've ever seen it done, and it was crispy. Uh huh. And she didn't have any deep frying oil. Yeah, I was like, "Holy shit, there's there's something to this." So I had I got one like that Christmas or something. Damn, I I I thought you would have been anti air fryer, but you're not. 
Uh, well, funny thing is, with the ones that I bought, I've burned the shit. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff, like I, I, I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the measurements is is another side of it. Because uh-huh. when you're talking about it being overcooked, I think the first time I had... It might have been either that, fish sticks or fish fillets or yeah. chicken nuggets. Yeah. Something in the air fryer and it was just... I, th- I thought it was just, the, oh, this is how it tastes with it. And it uh-huh. might have a little been, but it was also yeah. kind of... It might have been overcooked. But, um, yeah, I just... Even with my experience with the air fryer, it was... And you're kind of playing with the measurements. Uh-huh. But yeah, I've I've done um, some shrimp, some popcorn shrimp, uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. a few other types of shrimp that are already frozen. You just yeah, yeah. I think the swans. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, swan, yeah. 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 They're shrimp. But yeah, I I was pretty impressed with when I first just kind of like, oh well, we're in the future. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know how anyone else felt about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my my opinion is there's something to it. It changes the time, so you got to master that. I think you got to burn some shit before you get good at it. But, like, once you figure out, again, like I told my son, practice, 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 do it again, again. might cost you some money to burn a bunch of food, but, <laughs> like... If you figure it out, it take, it goes a lot faster than you could do in the oven by itself. Mm-hmm. And the versus versus a microwave, I noticed the other night uh, we got. Uh, I was eating with my homegirl, and she was she ordered us uh, uh, chili. It was like chicken tenders, but they were dipped in like buffalo sauce. Uh-huh. But by the time we got here to eat them, it was like uh, it was. Uh, Soggy? No, it was cold. Oh. But there was still crunchiness to it as I was eating it. So I was eating it cold. I was like, fuck it, this is good. It's delicious. But she's like, oh, you want to heat it up? And I was like, no. Uh, being a cook, you, know, you shouldn't. That danger zone is real. Like, I, I push that line all the, all the time with myself. Like, I, like I'll, I'll eat something that, you know, I fucked up and sat it out last night. I'll eat it. But that danger zone is real. Once you get a certain temperature, bacteria just it explodes. It, 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 it's go time. They start yeah. making babies and make all kinds. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point. The point is we had cold, crisp chicken. And it was soaked in in barbecue sauce. or It was, uh, it was like buffalo sauce, and uh, but it was still crispy. Yeah. The way a microwave works is it, it gets the the water particles in your food to start vibrating really hard, and they start creating heat, mm-hmm. and then it cooks it inside out, but it uses water and steam. And when we try, and I agreed, okay, like maybe we shouldn't be eating this cold ass chicken. We should probably heat it up and eat at least closer to proper temperature where it's safe to eat. Especially chicken when mm-hmm. you're messing with chicken. I just want to throw that out oh, for yeah. everybody. Watch your chicken. Um, we microwaved it and when we brought it out all the crunch was gone it had been steamed soft mm. and I was eating it and I was like ah should have left it cold because it was still crunchy which blew my mind I was like wow immediately you can tell that there is some faults with the microwave yeah but if you're eating like an inherently moist food like a lasagna which is probably one of the hardest things to reheat versus just throw it in the oven. A microwave does pretty well. Wow. Yeah. No. You asked. No, nah, that's my answer. I'm like, nah, you're blowing my mind because I'm like, is the air fryer so good? I'm like, what's going to come after the air fryer? That's even more efficient, or okay, is that the? Right. I was uh, I was watching this uh, this show on on Prime called Upload. Uh-huh. If you haven't seen it, everybody out there, I freaking recommend you go do it. It's a little cheesy, but it's futuristic, fun, and a little messed up because it deals with uh, death. Uh-huh. But um, they have printers that are printing out artists, like artists send out a code or a link, 
and then people get to print out their food in a food printer. And the way they did it for oh, the okay. for the show was was like a three D printer. <coughs> hey, yeah. You getting cold? I can go turn that off. Awesome. All right. Okay. Um, um. So yeah, there there there's this one scene. I think it's the very first episode. Um, this girl's eating with her dad. And he's like, hey, I just got the new, uh, he names a cook, a famous cook. He's like, hey, I just got the new so-and-so, like, uh, why don't we try these steaks out? He's like, oh, yeah, cool. And he prints them, he prints them out in a microwave-looking thing, but you can see it, like, stacking layers of food. And it's being flavored, and it's supposed to be a, a, a completely perfect copy so if you can imagine, you're watching Gordon Ramsay cook, you know, yeah. a bomb ass, you know, whatever, a, a lamb shank or a freaking fillet, fillet mignon. He probably doesn't do that. But anyway, imagine seeing him cook something so perfect, and then you're going, "Oh man, like that food looks so good. I want to eat it." And then think, imagine one day at the end of the show, they put up a link or something, oh the, the information, <laughs> the, the code that you enter into your food printer, and then you can have the exact same steak that they just cooked. Yeah. I like, <laughs> I like the sound of that. I like the look of it. Like, it, it was, it's a, it's a simple prime show, but they touched on a lot of these futuristic ideas. And yeah. again, like all futuristic shows, they didn't give you like, oh, this is thousand years in the future. They're like, oh, this is, you know, 2032, <laughs> something like that. Like something close to where we are now. I doubt we're going to be there, but it's like, it's kind of exciting. It's interesting. I, I love a good sci uh, sci-fi show where they think about the little details like that. And what's funny, at the end of that scene... Uh, they take a bite, and he looks at his daughter. And he's like, "What do you think?" And she's like, "Oh, I think the fat, the fat cartridge is low on your your printer, your food right. printer." And, and they both kind of spit it out. They're like, Pah. "So it didn't have enough fat in the printer." Like, as you can think of, like printing out something black and white, yeah, and there's yeah. not enough black ink. It's gonna come out off in it. Yeah. So I thought that was really an interesting concept. And if you can imagine, you know, you see it one day on a TV show, looks fantastic. You're you're watching, you know, Chopped or uh, Master Chef or whatever it is, and yeah, then you yeah, get yeah. to taste what they're competing what they're with. Tasting, yeah. You get to, you know, maybe even do it right along with the show, like the judges are tasting it, and you're tasting it. How uh, cool would that be? And, and all you have to do is keep your cartridges full, <laughs> and print out the same food. And, um, again, and again, it might be possible because of how simple our tons are. Huh. If they can master the flavors and then maybe use, again, I don't know how the ton, you know, the combination of ton and nose with the sensors in your nose create flavor. Yeah. And, you know, it's probably not as far-fetched as it seems, which uh, I love about that show. Oh, you got your mind of this one time. Um, I think it was at Denny's. And you know how they got the... This was years, years ago. I, I think, or I can't even remember who I was with, but there's a... You know, they got the Denny's Kids Mill. And there's usually, like, a, you're able to do, like, a Mickey Mouse pancake, or you're able to make a character out of the... Out of the fruit and the and the batter of the pancake, like making. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. And they were selling like a, I think it was a Mickey Mouse, and a, you know it had the blueberries and the strawberries and the bananas for the eyes. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the one of the kids had ordered ordered that. Uh huh. <laughs> and when they brought it out. I I don't I I I think about this moment because I didn't know if they were disappointed or if they were like, hey 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 hey, is this what it said on the menu? So they they got the menu, they opened it up, and they are comparing how okay. well okay it looked like the okay. picture. Yeah, and it just yeah, yeah. It, it, it cracked me up because it was almost like. Is this what I ordered, or is this kind of, is this, is this what I, is this, what you're bringing me, is this what I saw on, uh, on, on uh, the image? Yeah. 
And it just okay, it just reminded me what you're talking about. Well, check check this out. I got a tidbit for you here. It goes it goes again to my buddy at work. I I, I work too much. This is this is all I talk about now. Um, it's a food podcast now. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking <laughs> like, damn, like this, this was supposed to be our recap episode, and now it's like a cooking <laughs> cooking talk here. Um, uh, so my boss, he's he's he, my boss buddy. He he's got a position called uh, a room chef. Now what these guys do is they they're the top chef in the room, but, but basically they're they're the management of each menu. And a room chef is supposed to be able to go from each menu. So there's about three where I work. And they got they can go from this one, this one, or that one. And should be able to handle the kitchen and make sure everything's running mm. yeah. smoothly. Well, because I know him and we talk, I get to hear some of the stuff he has to do as part of his job. And uh, what, I, what I learned was uh, every month, like part of his homework, like who knew we would ever choose to do homework, you know. Let me get a job that where I got to do homework. You know? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah that, that's right. what I want. Uh, but anyway, his his thing every month was to present a menu item, brand new, fresh, using the stuff we already have, and he has to present it to the head chef, the executive chef, or whatever his title. And I think it's like super executive chef, whatever it is, he's the top guy, he's, he's actually a known guy around here, maybe even internationally, and uh, they, every month he had to present a special, uh, so we, we have a monthly special where I work, and the funny thing is, uh, when he presented it, he had to, he had to prepare all the ingredients, uh, give a picture of the finished product, or maybe not even that. He'd have, he'd have to cook it up and show it. Uh-huh. But then what he'd also do is create a menu based off of what he produced with instructions on how to make it and then hand it over to the executive chef and say, this is what it is, this is how you make it. And then the executive chef would prepare it and then make it as good looking as he can. And then they one day they would have like a professional photographer come and they'd take a picture of it and then that would go on the menu. So whatever the executive chef produced, or maybe our room chef produced, that would be the photo. That would be what we're shooting for, mm. for the monthly special. So, <coughs> when you're saying they pulled out the menu, and like, this shit isn't this way. <laughs> like, I'm sure there are some people out there, when they get their food, they're like, what the Ooh, fuck yeah. is this? Like, what is this shit? But, like, it, where I work, on the wall... The monthly special is photographed in there, and it's like so. When, like, I go to work on Sun. Well, I guess it doesn't matter, but I'll come in sometimes, and I'll be back from my weekend or whatever, mm-hmm. and it'll be between the months. So the next monthly special will kick in while I was gone, and I'll come in, and then they're like, "Hey, here's the special." And I'm like, "Oh shit! Like, what? What is? What goes on it? Well, how do you do it? Show me!" Like, what? Well, the big boss is supposed to come in and show all of us, but sometimes they do that and I'm not there, you know. So I come in or like, hey, show me, please show me. So they'll make it and I'll sit there and watch. And then I'll do it a couple of times, probably jack it up. And then the way I cook is I, I like to see how it's done and then I try to improve it with my kind of like, all right, I cook the broccoli a little more. Or like I'll pile it in a different uh-huh. way so that it doesn't get all messy. Like I try to improve it. And uh, like I said, the the goal is always to sell. If somebody orders this item from one plate to the next, it better look damn close to that photo. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it was a funny tidbit. That, <laughs> that, uh, <coughs> what you're talking about is, does it look like the photo? Yeah. And uh, the cool thing about where I work is they do all that in-house. It's not like some company far away and they're feeding their franchises, you know, this is what you're cooking and it better look like this. For us, it's like they use the the same ingredients we have in-house to produce something hopefully new and yeah. exciting or, or at least that looks good enough in the photo that people want to eat it. Mm. I'll tell you a few of the specials we had. Um, it's usually a burger. 
but it can be a sandwich. Uh, the the ones I remember, uh, one was a uh, Philly burger, so it was a regular burger, but it had like the workings of a Philly steak stacked on top of it. Yeah. Uh, another one was um, a recent one that I didn't enjoy making. Like it, it was. A, it looked like a good idea. It sounded good. It sounded like it would taste good, but. Preparing it in our kitchen was difficult, so it was a uh, um, sweet and sour pork. So it was a bed of mm. rice, uh, deep fried pork with bread on it, and then it would be steamed uh, broccoli, and then three like spring rolls. Mm-hmm. So that's deep fried. The the spring rolls are deep fried. The pork's deep fried. So one station would handle that. Somebody else would run over and get you know steam. They would scoop the rice, steam the broccoli, and then pour sauce on all of it and mix it together. And then you slap three spring rolls in it. In our kitchen, fast food, burgers, hot dogs, Philly steaks, Rubens, that was very difficult to pull out. Uh-huh. And when you get like six or seven of them in a row, and you're doing all these different little ingredients that don't actually, are usually not in our kitchen. Yeah. It was very difficult. Uh, I'm actually happy it's over. <laughs> we're on to the next one. Um, you you reminded me of. Uh, are you a fan of uh, Chipotle? It's not a trick question. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, they. You can tell their ingredients are fresh, and I appreciate that. But I was, the last time I went, it was before I became this cook. That I am now, or, or I, before I got the title, let's yeah. say that because I've been cooking all my life. Um, my impression was this is not Mexican food, <laughs> even though you know they're oh, Chipotle. They're you know, yeah, yeah. this is not Mexican food. They call it authentic Mexican food, and I, I'm thinking this isn't Mexican food. And the burrito was wrapped so big and tight because I wanted all these toppings that it was messy, like falling all over the place, it made a mess of me. So my first impression was it, it was not Mexican food, it was a little messy, but it was tasty. Mm. But I stopped eating there. Okay. Well, for, I... For yeah, those yeah, same yeah, yeah. So, anyway, you know, when Chipotle first came out, um, there was a, a spot, I think it was in either, in, um, maybe New York, somewhere on the east side, uh-huh. there was a Chipotle restaurant that... Uh, like, like the Chipotle or what? Yeah, yeah. It was okay. it was a franchise, but one of the oh, okay. the crew or the staff at that particular restaurant, you know, like what you're saying. What ingredients do I have? Uh-huh. And because you know, with Chipotle, it's a franchise, so the menu is set. It's not like uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah, you can just come in and change it like a mom and pop shop. You know? Yeah. So what? happened at this particular restaurant was some person they had made a new item uh-huh, uh-huh. and it was using what they had what they already had and yeah. you know there was no way to charge it because it was it was something new and uh-huh. again the franchise huh. is not like Oh, okay. hey, this is how you, this is the new thing we're giving you. Because I think that's how it usually goes. Like a Taco Bell, hey, Gordito. <laughs> now all they saw Gordito, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, they had came up with something totally different. And it was kind of cool how, I remember reading the article, how they kind of like really were innovative with uh, how they made this new. I think it was like a pizza something. Yeah. I, I could be wrong. It was a long time I read the article, but it was it was it was it was interesting because people started to hear about it. Uh-huh. It kind of became an underground thing because it was like Chipotle doesn't know we're making this, uh-huh. and they have no way to say we're charging it. But you know, huh. how do we sell this? And it it kind of almost became like this, almost like secret. Uh-huh. Secret, uh, yeah. you know, say the secret code and yeah. we'll, we'll get you, <laughs> or come at a certain time. 
Yeah, I'll hand it to you out the back door. Just me, um, me being little. But they were able to uh, sell the new item. Yeah. Kind of bypassing, you know, the headquarters, so like yeah. the head, whoever, however they run the business. Yeah. And I just always thought that was an interesting um, story because. You know, anybody can turn something out of nothing huh. and make it, yeah. you know, the next best thing. Yeah. Uh, and I was just, huh. I don't know, it's just something cool because it's like, even within the, like a franchise, it's just higher power that you always got to follow. And yeah. I think if there's someone so creative or someone so thinking outside the box they can you know turn that shit upside down yeah that model of this is the menu and you cook it yeah and someone else can just come in and say well I'll just take these ingredients and make something different and yeah and it's almost kind of like I don't want to say like going against the man, but it's a, it's a little kind of yeah, like yeah, a little, little rebellious, yeah. It's a little, yeah. Huh. So yeah. I, I, when you're talking about this guy, kind of your boss friend, yeah. sort of saying, hey, "What do we got, and what yeah. can I turn it into?" Yeah. It sort of got me thinking of that of that Chipotle story. Yeah, it, and I gotta say, if I don't say it at some point, I gotta say it. Um, my boss buddy, that's what I've been calling him, my boss buddy, because he's my boss, but, like, he's my friend. Um, he, I, I joined his team because I could see how, how seriously he took it, uh. and I respected that. And uh, there are very few people my same age like I, I respect too I, respect, I, I got respect from Juan out there like there, there's some others that I'm probably going to forget to mention but like there are very few people my age that I really respect mm. and um, this guy he took everything about what he learned in the kitchen serious safety code health code uh, temperatures uh, good product versus bad product <coughs> like uh we there. I'll tell you a little story here, um, and this is just him. This is this is exactly how he is. Uh, we were opening up our boxes, and I I'm pretty sure somebody took a box out of date. Like we get orders, and you gotta kind of uh, flip them. Uh, you gotta they call it rotating. You gotta rotate the food. You gotta get the freshest. The, you gotta get the oldest stuff that you have in there to the front, so it gets used yeah, before yeah. it goes back. Well, I, I'm guessing somebody skipped that step and, mm. and so we wound up with a box of lettuce that was wasn't as good it had like brown parts in it and we're like oh man this is typical of the kind of crap they give us and we we're picking out the bad shit and just trying to keep all the fresh nice stuff together and my boss buddy came in at some point and he saw just one time that we were picking some stuff out he said what the hell is this he grabbed that thing threw it out Went into our fridge, pulled out all the bags, saw the, like how many of them had like a little, just a little bit of brown in them, and he threw all of them away and said, "Fuck that! We're not picking through this shit. We're gonna use the freshest thing we got, and that way, uh, while we're trying to pick through this stuff and get only the good out of this, the next good stuff's gonna be going bad because we're not using the freshest." So he threw out at least a box, box and a half, wow. yeah. and uh, it was like. We we were like, this is what we have, this is what they ordered for us, and we're just going to make the best of it. But what the what was really supposed to go on there was what he did. And he did it. He didn't ask anybody. He didn't say, you know, oh, let me get approval from somebody. He's like, this isn't it, and threw it out. Mm. A lot of it. And I was like, wow, like, I can respect that. And now I try to follow that whenever I can, like, same same with tomatoes. They they mush. You keep them too long, chuck them. You know, and that's that's what I'm saying about this guy. I want to say that I really respect him for how honest and and how much he believes 
in in what he's doing. Yeah. And it's something to model after, which I I've always appreciated. So like, he he has definitely shaped how seriously I take my cooking, mm. which is probably why I judge my food when I get it. Like, yeah, him he rubbed off on me somehow. I didn't know. I don't know when it happened. <laughs> but now when I get a box of food, I'm like these motherfuckers right here. Like, Look at these ass clowns in <laughs> You know, we're duck, you know. Eat the food. Eat the damn food. But yeah. like these motherfuckers. I went to a, uh, I went to like a bar and grill and uh it, it's one of the items we sell is onion rings and I always over serve them. Like I always did, I always had since the day I got there, I served put too much in there. But it's one of those items that sells really well, and I think it's because they're getting, like, so much. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, It's worth the butt. Most bang for your butt. Um, I never thought anything about it. And then I went to this bar and grill, and I ordered a sandwich that I always liked, which is a Reuben. And I ordered it with onion rings. Right. And those motherfuckers, when that order came out, I swear to God, it was like four or five rings. Uh, I was blue. I, did, I was exploded out uh, of my chair. Yeah, like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck is this? Like, you sons of bitches. You lazy motherfuckers. And all I could think was like, they handled, they handled an order for onion rings and somebody put a little bit too much and some cheapskate back there yeah, just saved like the last five. They didn't serve up <laughs> yeah, all the ones yeah. that were cooked. And I see that happen time and time again. Somebody goes, oh, this is too many onion rings, and then they leave like three or four in the basket. And I know some bastard back there yeah. served up me those four already yeah, cooked yeah, onion yeah. rings. I was so pissed. I want to send it back, but then that's that other golden rule: you don't fuck with people who handle your food. But like, yeah, I don't send it back. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna eat my five onion rings, but fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody will be uh, yeah, disappointed. Yeah, a little, a little bit upset. Four are you? <laughs> Four are you? <laughs> I, I was like, like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you believe this motherfucker? And I was like, ah, oh, this motherfucker. Right? This motherfucker, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> Ask clowns you got working here. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how many times I see that. I get mad and I tell my coworkers like that's just hateful, man. It's hateful. Like, yeah. I'll see them like I'll I'll give I'll give them the serving like there it is. There's the onion rings for this, and it's either a big order or like a side one for your burger or something. And they'll they'll see it and they'll take what they think is right and leave like three or four. And I'm just like, Don't, why oh, do you do that? Just give them all the damn rings. Like they're cooked, they're warm, they're hot, they're fresh. Give them to them. Yeah. Don't, don't don't do that. Don't be a cheese Caleb. Don't do that. And they do it all the time. Oh, and, man. But then it happened to me that the end result, that may, maybe what happened, which I bet happens all the time, is they saw the order and they forgot it. They're like, hey, this is supposed to come with onion rings, not fries. And they're like, oh, we don't have onion rings. Oh, look, there's five still in the basket. Boom. Five onion rings. Uh, Bastards. Huh. And you wouldn't know that until you do the job I do, and then it's like you see it every day, and it's just like these motherfuckers. Yeah, you know, I've I've always had a, and I think it's just the excitement of going out to eat. But I always looked at the waiter and just kind of, you know, they're kind of the yeah the middleman yeah of. You know, the establishment and uh-huh. the flavors and you know, hospitality, you know, so they're, they kind of have, I mean, just, yeah, they got to they gotta do all that stuff and you know, on top of that, still kind of also, oh, you're only getting this much. It, it, yeah. But, hateful, bro. Hateful. I think it was uh, Red Robin. Uh-huh. They got a like an onion ring tree, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and it's just sort of like a like it's a bunch of onion rings stacked on top of each other. Uh-huh. So it kind of makes like a you're picking off of it as a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
Sorry you had to go through that. Bro, I was <coughs> I was cooking those like all week, onion rings, to perfection. Or burning the fuck out of them. Sometimes <laughs> you look at that and you burn the fuck out of them. That's another way <laughs> you gotta uh, deal yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I was, when I saw, uh, when I thought with about onion rings it. Or with the um, ranch? What? What are you guys serving here? And what do you... Oh, uh, they get to pick a sauce and they... And it just says it on the thing. Usually it's not something we handle. It's the people who hand the food over. Oh. Basically the middleman. The, yeah. They're not waiters, but they, they're they cashiers, servers, and... Um, now, what do you like on your onion? On your oh, ranch, for sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. Dip, get your onion rings and dip them in ranch? Hell yeah. Ooh. Maybe a little ketchup here and there, but yeah. yeah. Ranch, ranch, ranch. Okay. Or at least good ranch. How about that? There's some bad ranch out there. Is there? Yeah. Well, what's up with the blue cheese versus ranch? It's like, you want blue cheese or you want ranch? What what do you mean? I I would think majority of everybody wants ranch. But, I I mean, I... So there's blue cheese out there that's exactly like ranch, and it's like, ah, whatever. There's a little bit of a flavor to it. But what makes blue cheese blue cheese is is rock. The blue the blue is the mold. It's it's uh it's moldy cheese. Uh huh. And there's something to it. There's a there's a flavor to it. So really good blue cheese <laughs> is al- is almost too much for me for my palate. Like really good like really good blue cheese where it's been yeah yeah moldy up but it's still firm yeah like yeah that's almost too much because it's got like a flavor there's, there's just a flavor to it for me it, it's not always all that good yeah but as an alternative to ranch when ranch is on everything everywhere you turn ranch 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 sometimes a little blue cheese is good I got a salad bar huh yeah but yeah that's that's uh, mold as far as I know yeah it's mold uh, no, I never got it. Taste. I never got it. I oh, that's, so you're really asking me what's up with blue cheese? No, no, I just was. I was disappointed if it was there. Uh, yeah. when I'm not eating that. Well, uh, as a guy who doesn't like cheese or doesn't prefer it, uh, all right, I'm gonna talk to you like I talk to my son. At least try it. <laughs> At least try it. Make sure. I don't care how it looks. Try it because. Kid, well, I don't know. I, I want to start with saying kids, but people in general are choosy about how the food looks right off the bat. Uh-huh. No, it looks like ranch. Yeah, the ranch. Good. It well, ain't ranch. if it's not good, if it's not good blue cheese, like good blue cheese has chunks of cheese and it, it's lumpy. Uh-huh. If it just looks oh. just as flat and smooth uh-huh. as ranch, Eesh. you're probably not getting some of the best, better blue cheese. Okay, but, but yeah. I was um, thinking of the white stuff. Yeah, it. If you've been eating ranch all your life, for the love of God, try some blue cheese. Just try it. You know. Yeah. I just watched you eat a pizza earlier, and there was cheese yeah. on it. it. Wasn't blue cheese. It wasn't blue cheese, but I'm saying it was one kind of cheese that you tolerate. Oh. Uh-huh. So maybe there's another. Huh. Maybe there's a cheese out there for you. Maybe. Maybe. I believe it. It's out there. Huh. Yeah. It's, yeah I, I like to mix it up every now and then, but a, a true, really good blue cheese is not for me. Yeah. And that's me, a cheese lover, saying that maybe not that cheese. Well, I'm just thinking of other stuff, like the, like the wings or the carrots. Uh-huh. Blue cheese or ranch? I want ranch, but uh-huh. you yeah, that, you give that choice, and it's like, nah, I ain't going with the blue cheese. Huh. Let me. Uh, this might be a, a bad sideways conversation, but like, since I started eating sushi, what? I pre- start. Yeah, well. I'm saying since I started. I didn't say I just started. Oh, uh, okay, okay. But, uh, that's what it sounds like. I actually didn't really eat uh, sushi until I was older, like in my 30s. If I had it 
if I had it before, just the thought of raw fish kept me from eating it. Uh huh. I know better now. But uh, how you like it? Oh yeah, yeah. But w- w- the, what I'm trying to get us into a side story here is uh, not a story, but like a new conversation is complementing foods. So like with sushi, huh? There's usually some wasabi, which a lot of people won't eat, but and I don't want to eat it. But if you mix it with soy sauce, it becomes a spicier, different flavored soy sauce. Mm. When all soy sauce usually tastes the same, it's super salty, but a little wasabi changes it, makes it spicy and good and delicious. And then there's freaking uh, thinly sliced ginger. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Which, for the most part, is usually diet, which I don't understand. Huh? I thought it was called nari. Uh, I think nari is, uh, like fish eggs. Okay. Or nigari. I don't know. I don't understand all those different names. I just know visually the ones Okay, I I remember the ginger. Yeah, Yeah, but anyway, it might be nari. I don't know. Maybe. I I I don't know. I don't know. I'm not educated enough to know. I remember the term nari, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah, but but what I'm getting at here is is complementing flavors. Mm -hmm. So when you eat sushi and you're getting all burnt up, either hot or uh, maybe you've been eating one kind of sushi and dipping it, you got all this flavor in your mouth. My understanding of the ginger is it's a palate cleanser. So in between changing between your dips and your sushi, you eat a little ginger Mm -hmm. and it clears your palate with this new flavor. So it's complimentary to eating sushi. So you just mentioned uh, wings, hot wings, and the ranch. I always appreciate a little ranch with the carrots and celery sticks. But why why do we serve celery and carrots with hot wings? It's complimentary. So what do you think about that? Like foods, foods that are just there. <coughs> Some call it garnish. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like like. Is there a garnish or something that you appreciate, like something you'll seek out and eat, or you know, what do you th- what do you think about it? Mm. Well, garnish makes it sound like it's you're not supposed to eat it. It's just kind of flavor uh-huh. on the plate. Okay. But with carrots and huh. celery, okay, like, yeah, I, I you're what crisp. is that called? You kind of it's almost a side. Okay. Yeah, all right. A side appetizer or... I don't know. It's a... Because I remember, like, you know, not everybody likes wings, but, you know, they'll eat a carrot with some ranch. So, almost saw it as, like, just accommodating for Hmm. anybody else that was... Because wings at a restaurant is an appetizer usually. I mean, mm. you can get it as a main meal, but yeah. for the most part, the appetizer Whoa. is the communal. It's like the cheese crisp, you know, like, let's just hey. all taste this, kind of hold off. Yeah. The weight. Hold up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, the like, just a little something to get you ready for the main meal, right? I mean, that's how I yeah. see it. Yeah. So with the carrots and the celery, it was almost just maybe you're not eating the wings, or maybe everybody ate the wings. I just got to eat whatever's <laughs> left on the yeah. plate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I I think they. But might, might are you kind of saying like that? Like it's similar to the ginger. I think so. Sushi where you're because uh. Well, think of it. it it's not spicy. It's not meaty, it's mm. not fatty, it's a vegetable, two kinds of vegetables, and they're both, like, not mm. the flavor, you know, the most flavorful vegetable out there, but they're there with all your wings, all your orders of wings, and probably some other stuff, like some zucchini. Is sushi, uh, best with multiple people, or <laughs> is it kind of, would you also say it's a thing where you can eat by yourself? <sighs> Because when I, <laughs> my sushi experience and I, um, for the record, I don't really care for sushi. I don't okay. like sushi. But right, like, I, yeah. I've been in sushi situations where <laughs> this is all these different, just all these different types of sushi. Uh-huh. 
and it's just sort of just let's try this, let's try this. It's sort yeah. of like I so I can see how the nari is that. Oh, let me clear my palate and then try a, yeah. a, something else. Very, very strong flavors. It's a yeah. different. I mean, I know there's so many different types, yeah. different ingredients that make a yeah. California roll or whatever, a spring roll or yeah. whatever they got. Because yeah, yeah, I know yeah. there's, there's, a, there's yeah, they got all that stuff. It's a lot of. Oh, I mean, I would like to talk to the sushi snob. I, I think you and I should go to the buffet at the Sushi Garden. <laughs> that, that's my spot. Sushi Garden? Yeah. Is that on um, or in Broadway? Yeah. They have a they have another one in the foothills, but I heard they're just tearing down that mall, so they might not be there anymore. Okay. Um, sushi Garden's where I finally discovered I liked sushi. Like, hard, a hard yes, a hard confirm. Uh-huh. And so far, it's the best I've tasted in Tucson. I've, I've tried several times, like, because you can't always make it to the sushi garden at the right time, so it's a good price, because other times you could spend hundreds, $100 easily on a couple of rolls of, of sushi. But, um, <coughs> uh, well, I, don't, I don't know what the your question really was I'm saying like I really like sushi I I do like getting ginger I don't eat all of it but every now and then I'll throw it in there when I'm changing rolls or whatever like I yeah. make a new thing of, of soy sauce or wasabi and, huh. uh, plus plus I like to hit their uh, they have a buffet like a lunchtime buffet yeah they have a decent amount of rolls always available and then they got like noodles and fried chickens and fried vegetables and sweets and, vet and fruits and really decent. Yeah. Uh, I used to think raw fish was absolutely not what you eat, but like when it's fresh, which is the whole kind of point of sushi, fresh is cooked that it was made. Maybe not even cooked, but prepared that day, fresh out of the fridge, or just got there and they serve it up. Yeah. It's good. Delicious, even. Huh. And, you know, some of my favorites are actually cooked, like the tempura. It's a, just a deep fried roll. That's good. Huh. But I still want the rice and the. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and I prefer them when they got a little avocado in there. You know, I think the nari is the. Is the. Seaweed. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna call it nigiri. That that's what I was thinking was the little seaweed wrap around a, a big pile of fish eggs that, that are bright orange or red. Uh, yeah. Not, that, that's not for me. Uh. See, I got a funny thing about that. Um, way back when, when my sister was in high school, uh, there was a group of Russian uh, uh, exchange students. Uh -huh. That came down to our teachers complex. That's where that's where we live. That same place where you live and yeah. where I live. Um, we had exchange students living with us. Um, <laughs> I got two stories on that. Across you guys, like in the other houses. No, they stayed with us in here in the same yeah. house. Yeah. Oh, they they were they're from Russia. Where the hell where the hell were they going to stay? They like well, I thought you meant like as a neighbor's house. No. No, they they were like pin pals with my sister. She oh, had a pin pal ooh, so for cool. a little while. Yeah, well, the schools used to actually do badass shit on the res. They they kind of tightened it up really bad, and it's it's sad almost. It but anyway, sad. it's very sad. But um, they did an exchange program with Russia. They had Russian students from Klasnoyars, I believe is how it's pronounced. They came down <laughs> and. Uh, the, it was the first time I ever had it. This he's a little blonde, kind of skinny high schooler. I thought it was cool. It was funny. Didn't understand really very much English. And uh, he, anyway, uh, he brought with him um, what the hell is it called? It's raw, it's raw fish eggs, and it's supposed to be a delicacy among uh, rich people. Um, caviar. Caviar. He brought caviar, and I've only seen it as like black or like dark green. Uh -huh. But he brought these this like tin of caviar, and they were bright, kind of yellowish orange. Oh shit! They were kind of big too, like bigger than BBs, like maybe uh, 
like the size of a pea. Uh -huh. And well, the way he prepared it was he got a, a piece of toast, smothered in butter, and then like just packed on caviar on top of it. And then I'm pretty sure he salted it too. But caviar, the ones I had in it with him were salty as fuck. Like so fucking salty. Uh -huh. I ate some because, I, again, it's the same thing. I'm trying to teach my boy, try it. I don't care how it looks. Try it and see if you like it. Don't don't just say no. Yeah. Don't say no because of how it looks. you got to try it. At least with food. I don't want them testing out, you know, hard drugs or whatever. But anyway, um, so he brought caviar with him. and I, I was So my sister was in high school, so I must have been in middle school. And... Uh, he brought that with him. It was one of the experiences we had with him. Like, he's like, hey, Brett Cavery, if you want to try it. I'm like, yeah, we've never had it. I've never had it. I'm sure my mom had. And because of that caviar, I've never had it since. Mm -hmm. Except maybe with nigiri or, or what, you, what do you call it, niri? Nari. Nari, okay. I'm, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure you're right, too. There's there's several roles that have this the actual traditional name to it, like, Nigiri and Nuri. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I've avoided fish eggs ever since. And I recently tried the, the it was a seaweed wrap around the egg, fish eggs. And I ate some, but I was like, oh, I'm still good. I'm still alright. I'm alright. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I did learn how to make California rolls when I worked in town in Tempe. Mm, why so, the fuck are we making some right now? Eh, yeah, you gotta have all the stuff. They had all the stuff there. Okay. But I mean, I'm, that's how I know, I remember some of those terms. Uh -huh. And the, like the wasabi and the uh -huh. ginger, just kind of how it was on the side. Yeah. I, but I didn't eat it, so it was always just kind of huh? like... You, you prepared it? Prepared it, but so we had to know how to make it. It was sort of like uh, when you, the first thing you do when you show up to work, you know, make the California rolls. Huh. Cause, well, where uh, was this? Uh, Kyoto Bowl. Kyoto Bowl. Yeah, we talked about it on the podcast before, but um, we're, we're, since we're talking about sushi, I mean, the only way, I, only reason why I know so much is because I made them, but. Yeah, I didn't have a good experience. You're still full of surprises. You, I didn't know. Uh, but, yeah, so I we would make California rolls in the morning and spring rolls. What? Um, uh, are you going to make some uh, in the morning? Rolls. Are you going to make rolls. some in the morning? Are you going to you gonna stay yeah. and, and make uh, some in the morning? Uh, I don't think so. I don't got this. You don't got the stuff. <laughs> uh, you one of those... Big old rice cooker. Oh, dude, we gotta, we gotta do that. We gotta do and that. Then, I can't remember what they throw in it, but then the we use one of those like bamboo looking like uh, yeah, sticks, yeah, 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 yeah. and then throw on the so, like all webbed together. The yeah. green thing, the the seaweed. I'm thinking that's what I'm is nari, but I could be wrong. If you guys are hearing the sounds, the background sounds, this guy is, is hand gesturing, rolling hand, out. Yeah, yeah, he, he's yeah. rolling. Patting the rice. The onto the rice, rice with his hands right now. The, it was artificial crab lakes. It wasn't even, yeah. it wasn't even crab. All right. I got to dive in real quick. Let's see what the hell's up with all the fake crab. And what is it exactly? Because it's not, it's got to still be edible. So what the fuck is it? I don't know. Maybe it's another fish, but it's pretending to be a cat. Yeah. Or dyed? Do you think it's like regular other fish, but it's dyed like deep reddish pink? Ruby? I don't know, like, what a crab. I, yeah, I guess I didn't. What I didn't understand what made it artificial. Like, or if it was. Is it even possible to, to for a fish to be artificial? It's a tofu crab. Jesus. But it, we okay. used it and we're doing... Um, Wh which roll was celery? this? Which roll was this? Uh, celery cucumbers. Yeah. And then ranch in the middle. Ranch. And then we rolled that shit. Ranch, cucumber, fig crab. What, what, what roll was that one? An avocado. Yeah, an avocado. So what, what, that was the California roll. On purpose, it's 
Well, it's, it's the not, seat, it, that thought tossing the seeds. All right, tell me this. We're here in Arizona. There's not an ocean in sight. Are we using artificial crab to make our sushi rolls? And we're not in California. Or is it such a common practice? Are people like people in California right on the ocean? Are they also serving up these fucking artificial crab huh. sushi rolls? Um, well, maybe it's like crab that's not in the ocean, but crab just hanging out and, uh, and not in the I don't not want, in the I don't ocean. Want to eat that crab, and you that's know, what they're eating. Uh, but I, 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 you know, watch watching the deadliest cats. That shit better be expensive, you know, like real crab. Uh huh. So maybe it's so expensive, uh, so so that that. Everybody has to use a little artificial crap. Uh, we went to the we rode up to the casino. This is a few years ago, not a long time ago, but uh-huh. uh, just so happened that day it was like they gave me a free buffet, uh-huh. and the buffet was fish neck. Okay. And there's just crab legs. Just, you can have crab legs cold, and you can also have them hot. Huh. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, it was just, it was new to me because, uh, I mean, I'm, I like fish. I'll eat whatever's fish, but it was huh. like, you know, you kind of had to pop it open and, like, I didn't. That's work, man. It was almost like, kind of, like, yeah, like, I, like, I almost needed a, a teacher or an instructor to start to say, hey, this help, is... Help me sort this, through this, like, yeah. like, what, do, what am I doing? What am I looking at? Where do I begin? So, like, even after eating there, I was like, did I even eat the right part or did I even get what I was supposed to get from huh. what it was? Yeah. And even if it w- was that authentic versus artificial... Huh. So I, I I feel that might be a yeah artificial crab. You've brought up a very interesting question. I feel like even a farmed crab would still be crab, huh. or, or at least uh, maybe not according to people who eat fresh crab every day, but like like uh, like America requires the label, you know, with all the information. I think even farm crab, even if it has to say farm crab, I think it's still considered crab. Like, I don't think they... Yeah. Uh, I think ar- I think you touched on something. I think artificial crab is definitely like a dyed fish meat. I'm curious now. I'm going to have to go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then... The flavors we throw on... Soy or like whatever, like is it like an impossible? Is it able to just like where you couldn't tell the difference if it was artificial or not? Let me ask you this: Have you had an impossible burger? Have you tried it? No. Me neither. Why is it? Why not? Well, what is it? So you don't know what it is, so you haven't had it. I never had it, but I don't even know what it is. It's, from what I can tell, a lot of soy, so probably okay. tofu. Uh, there's a bunch of, like, grains. Uh-huh. I've heard of them dyeing it pink when it's raw, and then it cooks brown. And then some people say, like, oils to reproduce the fat content. Uh, there's flavors, you know, seasoning, they spice it up. But this whole impossible burger, like that, 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 what I just described sounds more like a veggie burger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Automatic, oh, that's a veggie burger. But what the impossible burger was shooting to do, what they were hoping to do, was make a food that's reproducible, like easily made with plants versus farming with cows. Yeah. And it was supposed to rival the flavor, texture, the satisfaction of having a real burger. And that's what makes it impossible. Huh. Alright, but... 
I haven't give it? I haven't eaten it. I haven't eaten a single one. It's been out for like a year now, maybe a year and a half. I refuse to eat it because I want my meat while it's still okay to have meat. Like, I imagine one day in like a future escape for us, like demolition man days, like they're going to control everything, yeah. including what we eat. And if it's easier to create an impossible burger, mm. then they're going to do it. It's kind of like when clone food, clone meats started coming out. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know the ramifications of eating meat that has its DNA reorganized or copied. Uh -huh. And they just started feeding it to us. So sometimes if you catch the label, it'll say contains meat from clones or something like that. I don't know what the actual oh, terminology sure. is. Yeah. But I imagine one day the Impossible Burger is what we'll be eating. Yeah. Against our will. Or maybe we'll, or maybe we'll all join the movement of, you know, farming cattle or any animals is uh, torture and inhumane to animals, you know, cruelty. Yeah. And then maybe we'll all lean towards uh, eating plants and veggies. If they can make it taste as good as a freaking steak yeah. or a burger. Well, that's the stupid part about it is if plants are so good, I mean, I'm not saying they're not good, but they're, it's, it's not to say they're the same flavor as Yeah, but in order, in order to buy over the rest of the people, they have to rival what people are already used to eating. Yeah, okay, so... So it has to... Rival that flavor. That's what their yeah. goal is. I, yeah. I'm just talking about it, I want to try it now. Like I'm like, fuck. <laughs> well, but again, it's sort of like well, we can make it taste just as good as what you want, but this is not what you're not. tasting. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. you're tasting this yeah. modified version of uh -huh. what you actually think you're going to. Think about what you want and then eat this because this isn't that. Yeah, like, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of that is kind of like manipulation in itself where you're like, yeah. you yeah. want yes. this, yes. but you can't have this, and we're going to make another variation of it, and it's going to be better. And then we're going to sell it where you normally get meat, and we're going to advertise it like it's the best thing on earth. Mm. Again, capitalism, beware, it's out there, and there, I worry that this is like, hey, get ready for this. Hmm. You know all this talks about the collapse of the, the food chain, of the bees, and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they okay. could, they, this could be part of it. Some people may see it as like, oh, the solution. This yeah. is how we reverse global warming because cow farts is what's <laughs> the methane, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but I do predict there'll be some forced feeding of some people. Huh. Maybe not everybody, but someone's going to be <coughs> getting that impossible burger against their will. I think we're thinking about it too much. <laughs> I, I think we're done. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying like in the sense of I guess, or maybe we are turning into bad people by eating meat, wow. and we just haven't admitted it. My my argument against that, and may, maybe it's a foolish one. I consider myself a scientist. Okay. I think about DNA, like the very minimal stuff we're made of. If you're not including atoms, all right. Now. Our DNA has resulted in us having both sharp teeth for ripping and flat teeth for chewing. Okay. We're omnivores. We eat meat. We eat vegetables. We do both. That's how we, that's how we were designed. You know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's in our mouth. Yeah. It's in our bodies. It's how our our, our hearts and livers and organs they all they've been using meats and vegetables or whatever you want to call it, plants to produce what we are the, this end result of evolution 
I don't think it's the first time we've had evolution, but I'm thinking it's where we are now. Yeah. And to try and change what we're eating forcibly could could be detrimental to all of our health. But to give these people credit who decide, oh, I'm no longer going to eat meat, they have their reasons, and I think everybody should go after their reasons. Sure. Believe in them so much, you change your whole life, maybe your own DNA. But what's incredible about our bodies is they change to suit what we're doing to them. Mm. So like an alcoholic will drink it, drink it, drink it, drink, so they no longer require food because their body changed to just require the the sugar and the beer and the barley, all that. It, our bodies change to require what we're taking in. Yeah. So some people are drugs, they're doing it, you know, meth or whatever, heroin, their bodies change to suit, to be able to stay alive and sustain itself off of what we're doing to ourselves. So over a long enough period of time, maybe we eat enough veggies to save the planet, and maybe we change or evolve to just require plants. <sighs> that being said, I love me some, some meat. Some carne asada, yeah. Yeah. And I don't think anytime soon I'm going to go vegan. Yeah. No, I, I'm right there with you, but you're talking about people selling that ex- <laughs> experience, but it's not that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an invitation crack. It's a soy burger, you know. Soy some, burger, veggie burger, impossible burger, whatever you want to call it, yeah. I saw soy chorizo the other day. You, know. you saw what? Soy chorizo. I mean, that's what they were selling. I mean, that's what it was on uh, the TV. But it was like, how is that not a thing? How is that a thing? <laughs> have you ever had turkey bacon? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, but I mean, not in a long time. Okay. What well, What did you think? Can you remember? I mean, I just thought it was a weird version of a bacon, but it was was not too... It wasn't bacon, but it was was a variety of something. Uh, uh, To me, it felt like a a sliver of dry bark, or like flavorless turkey. Oh, damn. Flavorless turkey. And, uh... I felt like Peter Griffin on, on, on the Family Guy where, where they're trying to feed him. He's just like, eh, eh. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like, eh. That's how I felt the first time I had it. And I've had it since where, like, my family was trying to go healthy or whatever you want to call it. And we had, we had some crazy foods. Like, we tested out this, uh, the, uh, it was called Cow Knot. Nah, you know, like that old joke. Nah. Yeah. It was called Psych. Cow Nut. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, this is beef. Psych. <laughs> yeah, they even put it in the title. Be- it was like, I think it was Cow Nut or like Beef Nut. Like, nah. God. Mm. They had it like chopped up like meat pieces, like little, it was almost like carne asada, like little chunks. Yeah. And we tried several meals. Like, my mom was really trying to turn us around as a family. Like, we we're, were big and we were, like, probably unhealthy. I felt healthy. But, um, and I still, I still kind of do. Like, I'm, I'm heavy, but I, I, I do believe that a, a bigger, heavier set person, not so big that it's detrimental to their health, but, like, bigger is better off than somebody who's got the six-pack or whatever. Like, if that person doesn't loses their food supply, they're going to die immediately. These skinny, hmm. oh, I got 3% body fat on me, their hearts will stop. <laughs> like, if, if they ever lose their ability to supply food and energy to their bodies, they're going to die immediately. And then a chunky person, their body's going to eat their fat. Uh-huh. As a, well, it'll eat muscle too, but it's going to have fat too to sustain you. <laughs> That's the whole point of storing fat, is to provide this like emergency energy for your muscle hmm. and a big buff ass person with no fat on their body take away their their energy source 
Like those people who do the survival shows, like Naked and Afraid, they're going out there, they crash immediately, like day one. They're all buff and like, oh, I got this, get out of my way. They get toasted in the sun. They, I mean, maybe it's just a, a really bad sunburn, but I, I believe it's that all that muscle requiring all this energy to sustain it. They don't uh, have anything to do that. Huh. So if they don't eat well, if they're not a good hunter, they, they crash. And then I've seen, like, big fat people come out looking all right, looking good. <laughs> they slammed down because they had all this energy. And they're kind of, like, running to the end of the, of the race, you know, like, I'm good. Yeah. You know? Anyway, I lost track of Nah, that. I get you. I get you. Uh, we're approaching three hours here. What the hell? Yeah. I, I think we should call this at some point. I, I think I think we've said what we had to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... I like, I wanted to do a quick one, but I think we haven't podcasted in so long. Like, it's like, we needed this. We needed to offload some Yeah, yeah. Theories. I think there's a lot on our shoulders. We got to get out. Yeah. So. So what do you think? You have some words to end with uh, on this? Maybe, maybe about the title of this episode? What would you call this episode? This sort of a reload. A reload. Reload or... Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Natives in America pocket reloaded. Um, sort of uh, back at it, you know, okay. back at it because you know it was a long time from our last episode, and then and that was our epic one, wasn't it? Our hundredth one, uh, our last episode. So yeah, this is sort of this is one on one. This is kind of the. Episode two of season four. Uh, yeah, but uh, we've also you know, got a lot coming. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. A lot of exciting things that yeah. are happening with the pod. And yeah. I got people in mind that we need to talk to. Yeah, the new gear. If anybody can help us, I want I want Gwen on the podcast. She's retiring. We, we I think we've all seen the post by now. If anybody knows her number or can... Talk to her on her last day of food sales. We want her on the podcast. I think that'll be a great. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to hear the stories yeah. she has. Yeah. So, but yeah, this I didn't realize we we're three hours. I was, Bro. I was, uh, we we had some. I don't know how we got to where we're at, but yeah, I mean, it was a fun ride. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be recording again, yeah. uh, especially uh, that we did it in person. Yeah, hell yeah. So I think it, I got nothing That's more it. to say. Yeah, <laughs> just call it, call, hit the button. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. It was up. If you made yeah. it this far, you know, good on you. It's good to be back, and uh, I'm glad you're listening. Still, I hope you're still listening. Comment. Yeah, hit us up. There you go. Yeah, we'll respond. Peace.